Hey, yo, Flip. Yo. I'm going to put you on to some fire, man. They got this new bed wash company. They got the lotion and the, the everything. What's their name? They got a recovery room. It's What's out- the name? Maestro's, Maestro's Classic. Three money's up front. I'll, I'll, put, put, you, you I'll put you on. I'll put you on. I'll put you on the Maestro's, sure? man. You forgot the way I brought you? You forgot where I brought oh, you up there? Oh, man. You forgot? You forgot man. about Ghost? All right, all right. Who is What's his name? Ghost. You know who he cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool, man. Yo, make sure you get your Maestro's Classic Bed Care products yes. today at Target, CVS, mm-hmm. or go on maestrosclassic.com and use the promo code QUEENSFLIP to get 10% off. 10%? That's it? I thought, it was, I thought it was free if you put your... Are you crazy? All right, I got it. Make sure you go there today. Log on. Maestro's with an S, dot com. I'm from Queens. G-Money! Yo. What's up, man? We back. We back at it. Yeah, how you I feel all right, man. I feel good. Long day, long day. Flip the script has been sure. yeah. doing good, man. We're jumping up on the charts. Mm-hmm. We're jumping up on the charts. That feels good. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wonder, you know, a lot of people, you know, they 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 becoming uh, they're becoming fans, you know. Yeah. And they saying that yo, flip, you gotta let niggas talk like I, I think mean, I think this is the most you let anybody talk. These last like 10, 12 episodes is the most out of all our shows you let people talk. So and they they still saying that. That's crazy. I don't know what you see, I'm not a regular interviewer. This is why we're able to to have a rapport with these fellas because it's the right. comfortability. If I'm not gonna sit down and I'm talking like my homie. Yeah. These niggas get the shit wrong, man. They want me to Oh, so what did you do yesterday at Dunfrom? Really? And no, <laughs> nigga, no, that's not how I feel. Yeah. But you look good, man. You know, I feel good. We back. Yeah. Yeah, man. Definitely. I respect it, though. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, um, they going to talk either way, man. Even when I'm saying something crazy, they still blame it on you. So yo, it, yo, it, they it, get it, at it you. don't even matter. You got to be a lot of trouble, G. <laughs> Ooh. Yo, I, yo. What's up with you, bro? You be wild. I'm <laughs> chilling, man. You, you, cool. you trying to start it today? <laughs> I try to start it. No, I wasn't trying <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Chill out, I, man. I had it on the screen. I was ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Come on, man. You know. You good? I'm good. I'm cool, man. Yeah, happy belated birthday to my nephew Dawson. You know Facts. I birthday to my son Dawson. Yeah. Nice man. weekend. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Appreciate y'all bringing Frigo Nico yeah, uh, yeah. and our princess over. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> they said that Dawson know how to skate. They used to show a trip. I saw a video. We went skating Saturday. That that day. And you know, you know, he been skating, you taught him how to skate? Like nah, how just he... he just started. And he's doing tricks? Yeah. <laughs> Stop. He watched Road Bounce like every day. That don't mean you can learn tricks. You got to practice. Where, where, how the hell are you practicing? Come through. I saw a video. I oh, saw it. Video. Yeah, yeah. He's nice. <laughs> I don't know. That kid is special. You know what I'm saying? You be lying a lot, sir. You want to take? You, tra- you put him in training. No, he's in in the house skating in the hallway. That's it. I brought him skating. and He just got it. He went by himself, went around. He's nice. Without without the thing? No thing. No. He just been going. He cool. Man. He cool. <laughs> nah, but I feel good. G money. Yo, you ready for this episode? Another classic, right here. I seen this man on on the big screen. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited to meet him. This is dope. <laughs> Gee, we did see him on the big screen, man. We did see him on the big screen. You know, the thing is that you know we want to get down to the bottom of every story. Everybody have an opportunity to come here and talk. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And I don't think that a lot of people. Hold on, pardon me. I don't think that a lot of people understand that there's his side, her side, and the truth. Facts. Exactly. And this man has stated that he's coming here to tell the truth. Exactly. Exactly. Most definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's only it's only one way to do that. Oh, that. Oh, you ready? Come on, come on, come on, Boosie, chill. Let, let, let's slow down. <laughs> let's slow down, Boosie. Don't get yourself started, man. I see the eyes. I'm on deck. G Money. Yo. Episode motherfucking 106. Nigga, we, we made it. it. Uh oh. Mm. Got a special guest, Talk Harlem. About Talk about it. All day. Uptown. Harlem. Mm-hmm. My man, Big Bootsy. Round of applause for him again, please. Appreciate that. Introduce your brother. What's good, what's My good. brother, Double Way. Double Way? Sean Boy yeah. Double. Sean Boy Double. Yeah. Okay. Thank so what's your Double Way or Sean Boy Double? Sean Boy Double. What does that mean? At me, you already know. Herc's oh. up. Oh, you <laughs> Yeah. Oh, here we go. Come on, Sean. Chill out, man, boy. Double, big facts. Oh, double chill, oh, man. man. Come here yeah. with that craziness, all right? Nah. <laughs> you, had, you, had, you had my bros on this couch. I've been in tune. <laughs> okay, mm. I appreciate that. Yeah, CK, yeah. shout out to the big bro. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, you know facts. you know them very well. Yeah, facts. I'm watching. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Salute, yeah. salute. Yeah. Yeah. How y'all doing, man? Paul, me, you know. Doing great. <clears throat> No complaints. Everything is good. Life is good. You know, eating good, 
staying, st keeping the youth looking, you know what I'm saying? Keeping it up to par. A lot of people that we grew up with looking like they old as hell, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I'm here to state the facts. Out the gate. Don't hype yeah. me, don't hype me. Out the gate. Damn, you hype right. All them niggas is ill, so. All day, yeah. Yeah. When you hype them niggas, they go crazy. And we gonna keep it real all day long. <laughs> <laughs> See, you gonna stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Never. We, go. We, go we, stop. We, we, we official in old Harlem. Like the fifth floor when y'all had Gang Salute, mm -hmm. just left Gangsta not too long ago. That's our bro, like he said. But when they talk about the fifth floor, that was our floor. We the fifth floor. So Lou got it mixed up. So we on the couch. That was our floor. That's our building. Yeah. They lived on the first floor. We lived on the fifth floor. He was on the first floor. You we feel lived me? on the fifth mm -hmm. floor. They family was our family. Our mother was their mother. Their mother was our mother. Break down what I didn't understand the fifth the fifth floor. He said that there was some crazy people on the fifth floor. That's what I got from it. In my building, in A Z's building, <clears throat> he was the fifth floor was Sound floor. An old lady Miss Evans next to us. An old lady named Miss Riggins around the corner. And then it was somebody else. My and man Jarrell. Jarrell and his parents. Yeah. Then we had which was Gangsta Lou's friend, which is our friend too. His, mm -hmm. uh, his name Thaddeus, Baby Thad. <clears throat> they moved in later on after we already made noise already. But we was, Thad and them was right next to us. But we was the only ones on the fifth floor as far as that's concerned. And gangster stuff, and, or as far as gangster living and gangster this and gangster that, we weren't about all that gangster shit. We about if you fuck with us, then it'll get on some gangster shit. That's what it's about. So we was the ones on the fifth floor. Hmm. Apartment 55, 723 St. Nicholas Avenue. Born and raised in that joint. That's our building. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting the feeling we're going to have like the Gangsta Lou and, uh, and what, what's the man name again? Fox. <laughs> Fox Fox. Fox Fox, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Know, that, that kind of energy today. He's ready. Yeah. That's my, that's my, that's nah, my that's big our bro. Uh -huh. That's our brother. We just yeah. left him. He was in the whip. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't that's that. You know what I mean? That's he big just, bro. Nah. He just... Maybe didn't I didn't I my brother was telling me about the interview so I really didn't I really didn't see that part about the fifth floor A Z said something to me about it about the fifth floor and all that but A Z knew I lived on the fifth floor so I don't know what was actually said but we are the original the people from the fifth, fifth floor but that is did like, he say something about a guy named not, Lloyd not to cut you off if the, I think he was talking about Blue Blue, Blue was from third floor. No, Blue is um, from the fourth floor. Fourth floor. Yeah, Blue is an OG that was before AZ in them time. And he was getting a lot of money. A lot of, lot, lot of money. Good dude. He put security in our building, which was street niggas, but he made them secure the building in a professional manner with a desk in the front. He did all that type of stuff. And he was an OG that we all looked up to. When we going out, to, we, he, if he was there in the morning, we going to school, he be like, yo, y'all going to school? How y'all going to school? If we got to take the train or Thanks. the bus, he putting money in our pocket. He give us forty, fifty dollars. We in junior high school. Take y'all, y'all getting in the cab. He was that type of dude. Hmm. So that's before A Z started all this A Z Alpo Rich Porter era. That's way before that. You know what I'm saying? So. But <clears throat> that's neither here nor there about the fifth floor no more. Let's get into some deep shit. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. He, <laughs> he said something about a guy named Lloyd on the flip. Did he say Lloyd or something like that? Lloyd? No such nah, person. No, nah, okay. it's no Lloyd. I think he said Blue. I think he got blue. it mixed up with Blue. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. He probably had a little mixed up. Okay, okay. and Blue and Blue was just an OG. Like, and real quick, <clears throat> about Blue, like, was he one of them? Because who was getting money back in those days you're talking about? Was he one of those people? Was he more low-key? With it, or people yeah, knew him? he was more low-key. He wasn't the flashy type guy buying cars and all that, but was getting a lot of money. But he was a, he was definitely a gangster. He had a lot of a lot of beef with people on the other street, like 148th in Amsterdam and Broadway with um, um, Mr. Nick. And um, everybody know Mr. Nick, you know what I'm saying? And Mr. Nick is a good guy, but... They all was going back at it back then. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to get too deep into that yeah, part. Respect, respect. You know what I'm saying? But that's who Blue was. But he was somebody that was getting a lot of money. But it's before the AZ, Alpo, Rich Porter era. For real, for real. So, you know, Lou know what he was talking about. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you ain't going to remember everything. Right, right. Yep. See, when y'all have these podcasts and shit, y'all be having people like me in tune. 
Yeah. And I sit there and I watch, I might blow my L <laughs> and I catch on. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? I like that guy, man. Yeah, yeah. that's a fucking <laughs> fact. I'm, that's my bill. That's my bill. Yeah, you ain't gonna stop. Come on, man. That's a fact. That's a fact. We and here. I'm gonna give it to you day one after my boy Blue. And God bless him, he passed away. His brother Russell was one of my good friends, started smoking crack later. And I took him off the streets and started him doing parties and all that stuff. And, you know, he started drinking and backslid on me, disappeared on me after one of my parties at the, um, that I used to do at the Savoy Manor in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, big up to both of them. So, but after that, I'm going to give y'all how AZ started in that same building after Blue, doing $60,000 a day hmm. as a teenager, 15, 16 years old. And I'm going to take y'all back to the cleaners before he even did that. Facts. I used to do the deliveries. In the paid in full movie, y'all seen the deliveries that was made? Mm -hmm. I used, I was a young boy, and I wanted to uh, get some money. I, you know, I used to tell him, yo, I, I want to get some money. I want to make money. And he was like, um, he said, well, I ain't really got enough for you to do right now. And I used to watch him do the deliveries. And I said, yo, why I can't do, do the deliveries? He's like, all right, I'm going to give you a chance. Matter of fact, you can do the deliveries. He used to tell me the address to take the clothes to. I would, I would do the deliveries. So I would take the clothes, come back. He would pay me $20, $30 just because he's a good dude. And he wanted to make sure, I, you know, that, that I got paid and honor what I was asking him. So I used to hang around the cleaners with him at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. AZ was a regular person, a, a person that's working. You know what I'm saying? Before we get into that, we got a couple of questions we want to ask you before we get into. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, 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 let's take it back a little bit because you, you, you're going there, but I, I want to make sure we narrated that you know what i'm saying like okay, we're gonna get to who, who you are as a person you know what i'm saying like okay. you, you personally so you you born and raised in harlem yes yes indeed. um both parents yes and my household. parents still together to this day wow congrats wow, that's dope i'm close to that thanks yes that's dope so what kind of kid were you growing up what, what, what kind of kid were you when you, was, you know before you um, you know i went to school at um, we used to live 141st between lennox and several i went to uh um, ps 175 and then, you know, that block was so rough, my moms and them wanted to, to leave from there mm -hmm. and get away to have a better life for us. So it was it's me, my brother, and my other brother. I have a middle brother. He's in North Carolina right now named Anthony. But um, they wanted a better life, so we moved to 146th Street in St. Nicholas mm -hmm. for a better life. So I went to PS 153. And, you know, I met a lot of peers. I did a lot of bullshit, you know what I'm saying? playing hooky, running around the hallways, doing crazy shit, but I still did my work also. Right. So I was in between all that, right? So after that, I graduated. I went to Stitt Junior High School, did the, uh, the, the still playing hooky, doing my work, did, I, I, I actually did my accomplishments, and then I went to Adolph Randolph, um, um, Phillip High School, which is at City College. It's a high school on the college, oh, on wow. City College. I went there, got into a lot of trouble here and there. My mom moved me down south, went down south, came back from down south because a white boy called me a nigga, beat the shit out of him in, inside the lunchroom. They mm. kicked me out of the school, had to come back. I went to Westside High School where, well, I'm not, let me back that up. I went to um, Park West before that, getting in a lot of trouble. We was robbing niggas and doing a whole bunch of stupid shit that wasn't necessary. My brother came there afterwards, mm -hmm. and they heard his last, they heard his name, and then they was like, oh, shit, I hope you ain't going to be like your brother. Spanish <laughs> niggas jumped me in that joint. <laughs> Spanish <laughs> niggas jumped him. He called us. We come down there. Yay Bro, my deep. whole block. Yay deep. Fuck we that. go down there. You know what happened after that. But the Spanish so niggas was like, yo, they say one word and they all reacted. So, mm. but anyway, that's the life that I used to live. I used why to wild out. So, sorry to cut you off. Why, 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 why are you in so much trouble? You, you think because it's just, just the environment or your friends, peer pressure? Peer pressure mm. and keeping up with the Joneses, Heard doing you. a bunch of stupid shit that wasn't even necessary. Right. You know what I'm saying? And 
I wasn't scared. I wasn't fearless. I was always one of the little skinny nigga to set it off at any time. Mm. What, what we waiting for? Punching somebody in the face quick. <laughs> and, you know, I was basically like a ring Real leader. New York days. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like uh, your funny. boy Joel Santana said, we from the city, city where the, the skinny, skinny niggas, niggas ride. Yeah. Oh, and that shit is like real. That was my anthem before I gave some weight and shit. You, know? you couldn't just play <laughs> with <laughs> any block in Harlem. Like, you might can go through some. But certain blocks, you know, you getting fucked up. Like some people look at Harlem like, you know, you got different boroughs and shit like that. You know, I got my my, my buzzings in them out there in the hallway right now from Brooklyn. The homies, the big homies, Spider and all that. Like my, 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 my homie Phil. Like some people be thinking like, yo, Harlem niggas is soft. But if you the came to 146 and St. Nick, like you ain't just fucking with a nigga. Impossible. You getting fucked up. Impossible. You getting fucked up. That's when it was really unity. It's different out here now. But I don't, I don't know about the Harlem nigga soft stuff. I don't know nah. I'm hearing that. When you, I know what I'm talking about. I when they come down, when they come down to borough shit, you feel me? Borough shit, like certain niggas be I, thinking like think niggas are scared in. to come across the bridge. Yeah. Like I've been coming to Brooklyn since I was a little nigga. Right. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. I think just outside looking in, you, people see Brooklyn as like the toughest borough probably yeah. in New York. Nah, but that's that's a fact. They look if, at it like that. Yeah, so like that's that. how, that's, how, and, and, that's and, all I'm saying. I like think that. Harlem is more so like the the, 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 the slick talkers, the fly guys, the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so some money. people Yeah, we go back with all the Decepticons yeah. from if, Park if you don't West, know, fighting with right. them. You know we we had a fight with the Decepticons at literally running through the train tunnels, fighting with them back then from mm. Park West High School, because Park West had Brooklyn and Manhattan at the time. So we did all that wilding out, fighting, shooting, stupid shit back then. Right. So yeah, Brooklyn definitely looked at as that. <clears throat> they said uh, a tough block was the block that Cameron lived on. What block is that? I don't know what the block, I forgot the name of it, but they said that that block was a tough block as well. You, what you trying to say, 139th? He, he's saying 40th. 139th, Cameron not from 40th, but Cameron he, from the east side. Is that what you put, like, you just listening to the rhymes when he be saying I'm 40th not, no, all the time? I mean, you know, there's, I guess there's Who the said that? Who said Cameron is from a tough block? The building or whatever block that he was living in, I heard from numerous people that that building that he lived in, or that block, he's was from the block, east side. Lot. He's from the east side, and so I guess block, it's the one forty. If I'm talking about no nah, one forty, nah. if he's not from there, he's not from there. But is that a no, tough block? One forty is a tough block. Not the block Cameron. That's my boy. That's family. Like, but I don't know his block for being a tough block, or okay. his building being a tough building, and none of that. Was that the block where the two guys? Um, it was a story. I don't want to get into the story. I don't really know. I don't want to make stick the story, but it, uh, basically, um, one guy, I guess one, two guys were running the block or whatever. One guy got shot, and then the nigga went around the other way instead of going the other way to the hospital. I don't know if you know the story I'm talking about. Mm -mm. Um, I'm going to get it for you, and I'm going to ask you about it later. Yeah, then, I'm going to find that, out. It, I mean, that ain't really a Cameron story that I know of anyway. But 140th, 114th Street, those mm -hmm. are like two of the craziest blocks in Harlem. Okay. You can't even go through 140th like that. Them guys, they might be mad at each other, but if they got problems and they, they, they can yell one word, they coming out the buildings like roaches coming and it's going to be a problem. You can't come 140th between 8th and 7th. You go through, if you're not somebody that is somebody, you go through 140 or starting off at 8th, or you might even start off at 7th Avenue. But time, by the time you get to the end of the block, you even gonna be, you're going to be robbed for all your shit, your shoes, your whatever. If you go through riding a bicycle and somebody like it, you, the bike, you're going to come out walking without the bicycle. If you go through on a dirt bike or a motorcycle and you stop on the, at the light, hmm. somebody's jumping on that bike, kicking you off. And if they might... Say, yo, let me get a ride. And you let them ride, they might ride your bike all day like it's theirs. And then come back and give it to you with no gas. Or they might tell you, damn, my nigga ran out of gas on 123rd Street. That's where it's at. I'll tell you where it's parked at. Wow. And that's it. Straight like that. If you're not thorough, don't go through that block. Can't. 114th was a little more mild than 140th, but it was still a crazy block. 140th is one of my good friend. Well, 
two of my good friends, they like they are my brothers. Uh Jay Black, Ghost, uh, my boy Cliff was there. Um who else? A few of my good friends there. You know what I'm saying? But Jay Black, when we get into the meat of this conversation, Jay Black mm-hmm. was one of the beginning people, which was Rich Porter Lieutenant, when Rich Porter started really, really being Rich Porter. Jay Black was he was supposed to come up here with me for the interview, but he's from 140th, and he's a well-known, well-loved 140th person. Mm. And it's not, that ain't the block that you want to go through if you're not somebody that is anybody. Okay. What block you from again? I'm you, you, from 146 St. Nicholas. Okay. And I go through any block and been you through good. any block. You good. Always was good. Always yeah, good. I'm always was good. <laughs> That's what's up. Any block in Harlem. So, I guess, I guess, being in that environment, that now I see you, you know, that's what kind of made you the, the person you were growing up and, and got you into a lot of trouble. Cause you you kind of had to be tough and had to be kind of show show out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We like to have fun. We like to get money. I grew up just getting money and watching, you know, the AZ, the Alpo, the Rich Porters doing their thing. They were somebody I always looked up to. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do the same shit. Fuck that. I wanted to ride around nice cars and have pretty women and get a lot of money and jewelry and all that so it's like fuck that i need to do the same thing Mm -hmm. but i also grew up fighting because i was a slim nigga everybody wanted to try to slim nigga my pops always made sure we was fighters period Mm -hmm. i used to beat a lot of big niggas up so you know and but i'm known for riding the dirt bikes getting money and being around the big boys you know what i'm saying so that kind of took me there, watching what they was doing, and right. that's what I wanted to do. I want. I, my mom's always worked. She used to work at banks. She used to sell money at a bank called Indo in um in Desaways. Indo Suez. In Desaways or something. Rock they used to sell seven. money, and um it was a chemical bank. So she used to take us to work with her. So I used to watch and see stuff. So that influenced me first about money and being somebody to have money but she always held it down but she always made sure we had stuff Mm -hmm. but we didn't always have it when we wanted but she always made sure we got it later on everybody else can get it like that fuck that we wanted to go and get it how we need to get it what what block big l was from 139th 139th yes and um and the nfl crew and all that stuff over there like that's um, Big L was one, from 139th, McGruff, you know, um, Mace is from 133rd, Mace is one, from 133rd, and all the other guys, I don't know exactly where they're from. I know Mace personally, his sister, that's my homegirl, just talked to her a few days ago, um, like last week sometime. Um, McGruff is my brother, I did a lot of stuff for him, had me, him, and Big L been on tour together. I brought them down, so I spent probably about a hundred thousand doing some stuff with them when Big L was alive, mm. touring before he was got killed and was about to sign with Rockefeller. I was gonna actually have him sign with me, but he told me he was about to sign with Rockefeller, and I was like, "All right, cool, let's do that," and and we get on. But he's from One Thirty Ninth. Can I? Uh, and I want to ask you a question, and this is gonna go into the story. Um, <clears throat> just be on the subject with Big L. In your opinion, why that people, and, you know, I'm not going to talk about things that I know. You know, I did hear things and speculations. I'm not going to put you guys in a position to say anything, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. People that kill other people in Harlem, they Mm -hmm. are allowed, not allowed, but they walk around for a long time. You know, I heard the story. I heard the real story what happened behind Big L, brother, and all that crazy shit. Yeah, it's brother Lee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, his brother, and that was locked up, and I heard the story what happened by, but, you know, same thing with the Alpo situation. These people, why do you think it's like that? Like, why do you think are they picking and choosing where to go? Even the guy that 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 did something to Big L, allegedly, you know, I heard that he was around. You know, at some points going to he got killed. They he, did, he, did, he did get killed. He, he did get killed. killed. But he was going to the the food functions that they was throwing for Big L being funny. And I'm saying, why was he allowed to do that? He dead though right now, right? <laughs> well, what? Yeah, he dead right now, but he yeah. is dead. But Sometimes why was he allowed to do that? You gotta be patient. Hmm. Okay, I can't yeah. argue with that. If that's, if that's your true answer, how you feel, I can argue with that. 
Yeah, everybody don't but move the same way. But you want to know way. how it all happened and came from a, a far? What happened was Big L, Big Brother Lee. I can speak about it now because he's he's not here. I know the story. I, I didn't know if you wanted to speak about it. I know no, the story I don't, too. I don't, I don't yeah, yeah, yeah speak about it. It don't make me a fucking difference. It's I mean it just it's crazy and it's sad that that shit's still happening to this day. That block is like they all still going through whatever they going through. You know his Big Lee son just got killed. I didn't know Big Lee's son got killed. He's dead. He just recently, last mm-hmm. month sometime. Yeah, last wow. month. So that's due to the same shit that's going on from with Big Big Lee. What happened was it was four, Big Lee and three other dudes was best friends. And Big Lee and one of the other guys fell out. But two of them was more cooler than each other, and these other two was more cooler than each other. But one of the two was beefing with each other. Big Lee getting into it with one, and then <clears throat> the bullshit happens. Then the other friend couldn't get Big Lee because Big Lee was locked up. So what they do? They get Big L. That's what happened with, with, wait, wait, with, whoa, with my whoa, brother. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about the nigga that saw Big L outside when the nigga ran in the building? You forgot about that? Do you remember that part as well, what I'm talking about? Really, I don't know that part. I don't know all the distinct details. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just fucked up that <clears throat> you would kill a person like Big L, which heard, is a good person, is a good role model, somebody that was about to be something because you mad that... His brother, you know his brother's gonna come on one day, but you know the name, the, 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 how the street game go. If I can't get you, I'm gonna get your brother, your cut somebody that you love. I'm gonna mm-hmm. get you. So that's just the game we is playing. And <clears throat> Big L probably never even seen it coming that he would even think that a nigga would wanna go there with him because they all was friends. That was They was all four friends. Had nothing to do with Big L. Big L was a young boy to them dudes. And whatever's going on, still leading up into right now. I heard Big L got killed in, in broad day. Yeah, I was standing on my block, coming what out of happened? coming coming wow. out of a coming mm-hmm. out of a building off of uh, Lenox Avenue. He was coming out of a building. I think it was promoting something. It's a nice sunny day as too. well. You know what I'm saying? And it was like it's fucked up that it it went down like that. But. That's the that's the street life. Rest in peace. So so he said he said um he he think the reason was that um the person who killed Big L didn't get hit sooner because of his patience. How how do you feel about that? Do you feel it's the same way you feel? Or? No, I don't feel that way. I, Why do you feel it took so long for the? I don't I don't know why it might have took long, but what he's saying makes sense mm-hmm. because when you got to beef with somebody, somebody, you got to chill because you don't mm-hmm. want nobody to say that you did it. I mean, people, you might want to rock. You ain't just going to jump it. out the window, then you be doing yeah. 25 to life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some people don't care. They see what happens, they just want to respond. Everybody ain't got a lot to lose. Like, I got a daughter and And the people and that don't care family. is not smart. Right. You feel me? The Fact. name of the, 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 when you lay down the murder game, my nigga, it's, it's, it's to be, to get away with it. It's not to, I did it so somebody can know I did it and all that. That's corny. Right. So whoever kill people and get caught, you stupid. Yeah, I agree. You're, you're a fucking idiot. So first of all, you shouldn't even do it. Leave it alone. Mm-hmm. If you ain't going to do it, if you can't even have a chance to do it right, don't do it. Leave right. it alone as bad as you want to do it. So however it may go, that's what happened. I didn't hear about the nobody getting caught for that murder. Can I, Let me yeah. ask y'all something, right? Nobody <laughs> got caught for it. Your question, why it takes so long? You don't think that go down any other place? So you saying other other spots just move on niggas the same second, same day? No, no, I'm not. I, I agree, but I just it's a it's a and I'm being honest and truthful. Yeah. When I hear about these stories, like when I when I get wind of these stories or like privately, or when, and and they tell me that the people that's doing these crimes are walking around and kicking over candles and walking to the 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 functions. That's you know I think that's kind of. Yeah, it's that's fucked up. So that's I, a fact. But I'm trying to figure out like why is, is people this is is the person that strong or people are deciding like ah, I'm gonna let you have it till we get you. Like it's, that's what nah, I'm saying. Nah, What's nah, the mind? I, I, I didn't hear nothing like that ever happening. Like somebody heard, just walking through a block kicking over candles. Are you talking day. about the actual guy who killed Lee? 
yeah. kicking over candles. Oh, that the, that's what heard, you're saying. Yes, yeah, I, I heard that the guy with the big L situation oh, was at, was going to the. I mean, they do, they do, they do the a visual uh, spot. A, a, yeah, actual. visual spot, and they do a barbecue for him, right? I, like I, I heard right. he was going there, right? And and you know, people were getting mad at him because they see him. But I heard that's what I heard that he was going there. I don't know if it's true because I wasn't there. This is all alleged, right? Right. I ain't, I ain't and, hear about that neither. But oh, okay, it's, okay. Nobody, it's, it's, I ain't hear about it, that. It, I mean, okay. it's, it's a possibility if you heard it, but it wasn't. Mm. That, that, a, that right there is like I, I don't know. You going through a nigga block and doing that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't jack that. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. I, I don't think McGruff and them would even nah. allow that. Nah, because they too much pain. Yeah, they not All gonna respect. play with nobody doing that disrespectfully. And it's a lot of other guys that fuck with Big L, that love Big yeah, L facts. in that block. So you ain't gonna just come and kick no candles over. And nobody's that thorough to say that they can walk through the block and do that. I don't know. I be in that block. I still in that block all the time. I used to play across ball in the park across Niggas the street out right there, there all the time at that so park. So I I doubt that very seriously. And I, and, mm. and and you know I, I'm happy that you said that. I just that was in my mind because you know I, I did, like I said, you know people, you know going to these like I said they do a event for Big L and then I heard right. that you know um, that the guy that did it was. At the functions that people would get acting like it was a probably public function. he probably was there. Well, yeah. to try to ask for a play to fool or some try to funny shit like being funny. Right, and I, probably. You yeah. know, I, I don't think that he. And when they said that, I, I didn't think that they didn't tell me. Or when I heard that he went to the block and did it, I don't know if they did a when they denied him food. If he did it, if they had a candle light and did at the event. If you understand, I don't know. I don't know where his. I don't know where they throw a barbecue for him. I don't know about it. Right. I just when you hit, it's just probably in the park right, right there on one thirty nine. Yeah, I'm like, damn, why, right why, why is he going to the park? Like you know, that's why I think you know. You know, this is what you do right here. So you get the info and all that, but a lot of shit be sucker shit too. Sometimes, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, I don't like you ain't just walking through that block kicking over no shit. Yeah. And, and somebody yeah. just lighting. It. I don't care yeah, if he just killed them the the other day. Somebody there is going to feel some type of pain. Like you just disrespecting my man's shit. Nah, that ain't Respectful happening, thing. bro. Not 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 him. Pardon me. Yeah, bro. yeah facts. Nah, it's all love. Yeah. Talk about Big L as a person, though. Like you, you said, you know, you doing firsthand. Yeah, obviously, you good know, good dude. Like to laugh and joke a lot. He snap on you all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> facts. All day. When we was on tour. That's all we did in the van. Man laugh had him in joke. the south. That man had him in the south when he really wasn't doing nothing up here. Yeah, mm. when he, you know what I'm saying. When he lost his career facts. to Nas. He didn't lose his career. Let me rephrase that. When his career got to like a standstill because they signed Nas and they was focusing more on Nas. Right. So after that, I called Gruff up. I'm like, yo, get L on the phone for me. And McGruff got him on the phone for me. And I said, yo, y'all need to come down south. Let's just run around and start touring. And we started raising the bar again mm. on our own. And I spent $100,000 touring mm. with everything, hotels, van, cars, everything. And we did that. Wow. Can't make this shit up. Like, That's a fact. And he started getting back in the groove of things. And after that, I wanted to sign him with my label, which was Big Bucks Entertainment at the time. So I was at his house with him. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I just came from North Carolina, got up here, I went to his house. I'm like, yo, dog, we need to really just put money into your career right now. Let's go ahead and start it. And, and let's let's team up. He was like, yo, Dame and Jay-Z, just call me. I just had a meeting with them. I'm about to go back down there. They're getting ready to give me a deal for wow. flamboyant entertainment. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, word? Okay, well, we'll do that. I'd rather you do that because that's a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, and I'm going to pull you in. I was like, all right, say no more. Let's do that. And after that, my boy got killed. And that shit, like, fucked mm -hmm. me all up. It fucked a lot of people up, right. actually. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And it wasn't about the let because of a deal or we getting some money. It fucked, us, fucked me up mentally because that's somebody that was a good dude. That was right. my dude. And he was a good dude and he tried to help a lot of people for real. So that, you know, that was a another error to what I was doing with Big L. Right, right. So <clears throat> let's get into it. So. You're young, you give a lot of trouble, so then tell us the day you meet A Z. And first of all, I wanna say rest in peace to Big Al, you know. Yes. Yeah, you know rest in peace. Real talk, my brother. And um Definitely. and if to people out there like if there's anything that 
you you feel you know I said something wrong, you know what I mean? Um, hit me up or whatever, you know what I mean? Because one thing we're not trying to do because. My man said this is what we do, but it's not what I, my intentions, not mm-hmm. what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like, or my intentions to do to try to make something out of, you know, or, or misconstrue any story or put it out there to the audience. I definitely want to have the truth. And if I can keep it to myself and nobody want to talk about it, I will. You know what I mean? Sometimes. Well, they're doing a movie on Big L, too. You yeah. know that, right? No, I didn't know that. Yes. They got a, um, they did the casting call. I've been talking with the guys that's been doing it. Um, Once um, Little Lee got killed. It kind of put a little dent in what they doing, but they still fighting towards it because they still have the rights mm. to do so, and they gotta hurry up. So they trying to get a budget of a hundred thousand dollars together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So anybody love Big L? Y'all go <laughs> ahead and 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 and, and uh, send some bread over. Yeah, everybody donate to that if y'all want to see the movie. Y'all see the, everything what he was doing, and they already got the cast and everything. Everything was going great oh, until wow. that happened. They did the cast in Atlanta. So, you know, all the Big L fans, somebody that's about <clears throat> wanting to see somebody do something positive, to show something positive, because it's a positive message that's going to come out of it. Anything we're doing now is going to be a positive message. Right. All the way to right now with this interview. So, hope people send some money out to my boys, man. Respect, yeah, definitely. So, I think that's needed, too. Sorry to cut you because, you know, okay. I feel like now they, they're showing a lot of documentaries and you know, movies on artists and, and groups from back in the days that some people may not know about. So the the, the film that they put together right. when it happened, I think it'll be definitely helpful for hip, for the, for the culture for hip hop. Yes, you know for the, so, definitely for the culture, man. It'd be dope. Big L's with everybody. You got yeah. you got you got my boy too, my man Loon. Don't forget about him, my man. He'll be home soon. Loon, right, free Loon, free yeah, Loon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Loon was in the Fed joint together. We slept side by side. Mm. That's my man. Yeah, that's family. family. So, 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 how, how, let's talk about how, how you met AZ. Well, when I moved from 141st between mm-hmm. Lennox and 7th, we moved up to 723 <clears throat> St. Nicholas, apartment 55 on the fifth floor. Our floor. It's getting close. It's getting close. Yeah. So, you know. After all the blue situations and whatever, I used to just see A sitting on the stoop all the time. We used to come in from school and he'd be sitting on the stoop. Speak to him, he'd speak, what up, my nigga, what up? So he was more like a big brother figure to, you know, all the my friends that lived in the building. Mm-hmm. Me, I took more to him because I started noticing what he was doing. And the cleaners was... It's Jimmy's Cleaners. That's what it was called, Jimmy's Cleaners. In the paid in full movie, it was Mr. Pibbs or whatever. Yeah. Which, you know, changed names to secure people's innocence. So um, I used to always go to the store that was right next to the cleaners, and I noticed he was working in there. So I'd go in there and holler at him, what's going on? What's going on? And me and him would be talking. Right. And some of his friends would be in there. They'd be playing checkers and all that. And I'd end up sitting in there playing checkers. And, you know, they just look at me like, what up, little nigga? And I was the little nigga. You know what I'm saying? So after going in there all the time, I was end up playing checkers and watching his friends come in. And he was making delivery. He'd be like, yo, I'll be back. I got to lock the cleaners up. I'm going to make a delivery. I'd be like, all right. So I'll leave and go play with my friends. Sometime around, I'll come back. He'll be back in there. And I was like, man, I want to make some money, man. I was 10 years old. Mm. And he was like, I ain't really got nothing for you to do. I said, man, I could deliver the clothes for you. And I started delivering clothes for him. And he'd give me $20, $30, stuff like that, help him deliver clothes. Because Mr. Jimmy used to leave him to run the whole cleaners. Mm. for You know what I'm saying? And he was, what, 15, 16 years old? Mr. Jimmy be gone. Hold on, though. We- what you need all that money for at 10 years old, though? We, 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 we I wanted to time, make man. money. That's all was in my <laughs> mental. I uh, need, I want to make. 10 years old? That's where my mind was at. Was make, why? Making <clears throat> money. Because I want money. I like money. I watch my moms do her thing. And at one point in time, like I said, she'll buy stuff, but we probably have to wait to get it sometime. But we'll get it later. Right. So I just wanted to make some money. So. After that, I started noticing other things going on in the cleaners with AZ. Mm. I started seeing people coming in there, and he passing them 
bottles and exchanging money. So I don't say nothing. I'm asking him, like, like, what's that all about? He was selling Coke, $20 a bottle. Regular AZ. Still don't get fly, none of that. Mm. He wasn't getting a lot of money at the time. That's when he first started, you know, the uh, the big saga. Then I noticed I seen him pouring stuff in the dollar bill, $10. That was half a bottle. Mm. Then after that, it let, to make a long story short, after that cleaner situation, I told him, I, no, I told him I want to make some money doing that too. He told me, no, he never wanted me to sell drugs. He mm. told me, hell no, I'm not, you can't do that. So I'm going to school. I was going to Stitt High School and I met a Spanish dude and the Spanish dude was stealing from his brother, stealing Coke. And I was like, yo, I need some of that. He said, yo, I can, I can get some Coke for you, whatever. And he bought me some Coke. I bought it to AZ. AZ looked at it. Mm. He was like, he laughed and all that when I gave it to him. I was like, yeah, I can get some, man. He was like, let me see it. I gave it to him. It wasn't really a lot. He let it, put it on his hand, did his hand like this, put it on his hand, licked it. He was like, oh, this shit kind of right. He was like, who gave you this? I was like, my friend at school. He can get some of this, he told me. He laughed. He told me he still didn't want me to fuck with no drug. He was like, man, you need to chill, man, with all that. Hmm. So I, my boy brother caught him, beat the shit out of him, long story short, but that. So... After that, next thing I know, um, AZ moved to the building, which is 723 St. Nicholas Avenue, and started progressing. Progressing. Next thing I know, I seen him pulling up in a in a in a Toyota, a a, 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 a gold color Toyota system. First person with a system that I ever seen. Loud music playing with his with his uh Fisher hat. What were they calling the fisherman hats mm -hmm. back then? <laughs> After that, he bought his cousin named Darren. We call him Smooth. Bought him, had him out there because that's somebody he could trust. He was doing it. The building ended up doing sixty thousand dollars a day. Buying work from Nunu. That and isn't the dude name was Nunu, but in the movie they called him um. Nunu. Lulu, you know what I'm saying, and he was, and and the birds was going for ten thousand at that time, back then, and niggas was doing sixty thousand a day. Mm -hmm. So, as he prospered from the building, we moved the situation down the hill to one forty fifth Street. You and said we, so at this time you you're part of the you're you're part of the movement now. Nah, not at that time. Not so yet. right, I'm glad you asked. Said that no, because at that time I wasn't still a part of the movement. Mm. I wanted to be, because I seen mm. what was going on. But we had a mother and father that was on some shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get that, that ass beat. Yeah. I mean, no. Mom and pops yeah. beat that ass. So no, I wasn't part <laughs> of the movement. Yeah. Yeah. Shout yeah. to mom and pop. Flushing <laughs> packs and shit like that. Mm. Yeah, for real. I'm glad you said that. No. He moved the movement down to 145th, right? So I got a little older. I think I was about 13 then. And he moved it to 145th between 8th and 7th. And he opened up a store called a jukebox. So I'm back on his neck again. I need to get some money. I want to get money. Mm -hmm. He told me, come down the hill. Meet me there tomorrow. Met him down there. He showed me everything to do inside of the game room. We used to have all the drugs in the games i get he gave me all the keys to the game to the, to the uh to the games mm. and and gave me all every time the work come in i put it in there every and next door was another store where the drugs was being sold first we started selling out of the store after that started selling next door but <clears throat> i was never selling i was just running the store and making sure that people getting the drugs People getting the money, me putting the money back in inside the game. When he come, all the money and everything is accounted for. Hmm. I was getting two thousand dollars a week at thirteen years old. Doing that, I go up Man. the hill to my block with all my peers, take niggas shopping. Niggas is like, oh shit, what the fuck? Couldn't believe it. So 
I was running the game room for him at that point in time. He had some other older peers running at one point in time, but he knew me from a child and from childhood. And then at, after that, that's when he trusted me to take over and handle all that stuff at the store. And that's how that happened. Hmm. So you're handling the stuff at the store. <clears throat> what happened next with AZ? When do you, are you around when he meets uh, Alpo and Rich? Because I heard that the story is a little mixed up sometimes. It's very in, mixed in up. In the movie. Um, can you walk us through what you remember? I know Rich Porter when he was packing bags. I know Rich Porter when he lives up the hill, up the hill. Like my block is like 146. You go up 146. That's where Rich Porter used to be as a little kid. Him, my boy, God bless the dead, um, Clyde. They used to come down riding on the dirt bike, taking turns riding on the dirt bikes and riding. Fly little niggas at a young age. I was a little boy then. I still was probably about 10 years old watching them come through the block riding. Um, so years later, that the movie was definitely switched around after A sold it to my brother to Dame, they you know had some stuff switched around. But anyway, Rich Porter later on down the road, Rich Porter was um a L.A. A, people don't talk about L.A. L.A. was Rich Porter's big homie. A lot of people know about L.A. He was really the big dog, big big dog. You know what I'm saying? So. Long story short, when A moved from 145th, Rich Porter been getting money up on the hill and wherever him and L.A. was getting money. Once we was on 145th, A wanted, had a problem with some people and some shit got ugly and he wanted to leave it alone. Like Lou will tell you, like Lou told y'all in the other interview, like when A hear about some shit, he ready to break out. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. He ain't around no. He, he not going to be around it. He's going to break out. So <clears throat> he moved his operation to 134th between Lennox and 7th in a building. We had that building. Rich Porter was always up the hill somewhere. He was nowhere around down there. This was that King Erna dumb shit that he talking about. AZ moved his operations all around Rich Porter. That's a fucking lie. That's stupid. He moved to 134th between Lennox and 7th. Had the spot clicking there. Same thing killing the game it was nothing to ride around with a hundred thousand in the trunk and and knowing you're gonna see another hundred thousand tomorrow easy so we moved the, the to 134th had some problems in that block my boy Cato God bless the dead threw a nigga I don't want to mention his name because a lot of people got a lot of love and respect for this particular person but it was a second floor window my boy Cato threw the nigga out the window for stealing and then A was like, yo, he liked that shit. we got to move. He moved from 134th to 132nd. That's when you hit a monster. Like, the location, 132. They, we moved it to 132nd. We kept 134th for a little bit to make sure 132nd was secure. 132nd Street started getting and bubbling, bubbling. We let 134th Street go. I used to be in there running the 134th Street spot for him for a little minute. Let me ask you a question. Why you think AZ made a killing? What was what was his what was his what was different about his work than everybody else's work? Well, I didn't know what was actually going on because I was a young boy, but he definitely dropped the prices. Okay. Yeah, that's what I heard, yeah. He dropped the prices, and he was getting it for a good number. And I don't know how he met... Nunu. I don't know how he met Nunu or whatever. I don't know how he met him. Have you ever seen Nunu before? Of course. It? I used to go buy from Nunu myself. AZ gave me opportunity to do that once I got older and I wanted to get my own money. So the story I was buying Nunu. apes from Nunu at like $2,000. The story when Nunu got killed, is that true in the movie? Nah, Nunu didn't get killed. I think Nunu is deported in Dominican Republic right now. And he can't come over there. I just talked to one of my other friends that was, which is AZ's sisters. 
ex-husband is a good friend of mine and he's over in Dominican Republic said Nunu is over there and deported and can't come back right now that's the only reason why I could mention his name right now because other than that I wouldn't even do all that because he's not doing what he used to do anymore so so what part we was up to we Nunu yeah, Nunu. So Nunu. Did I meet Nunu? Yeah, I know Nunu personally. I go see him myself by myself. Az is the type of guy that when you when you show him progress, he he, he don't mind sharing the love. He always was a good dude. That's why I'm up here right now because I don't like the way people was portraying him to be like a sucker, a scared nigga, a snitch. He's not none of none. Of, he's not none of that. We gonna get we go, we gonna get into that. No doubt. So Rich was getting money. Mm -hmm. The reason why AZ made money is because he dropped the price, you said. Right. And his work was good. Exactly. And it and it's not like Blue Magic. Is that right? <laughs> no, he always going to keep the good work. Blue Magic, what that was heroin. He even selling heroin. Oh, man, I'm <laughs> just like, I'm just, yeah. um, Frank Lucas. Yeah, it just told some old school shit. Nah. But his shit was good. So now, when do you, you knew... Rich Porter. Yep. AZ, you from said. From Little Kids. You said AZ moved from 134th. From 134th. Our block. To 135th. To 134th. To 132nd. Okay. Now he moved to 132nd. What's, what's going on there? Killing the game. In and out. Cheese lines. To buy cocaine, my nigga. Back then. Cheese lines. Some of the cheese lines, like, like Lou said, the, the back of the days, cheese. Cheese yeah. lines on one thirty second. Actually, we was in the middle of the block first before we turned to the avenue. He was in the middle of the block of one thirty second, and then we moved to the next, like close to the one thirty first street, hmm. and it was cheese lines all day long. It, it, it it's like money follow him, you know. It's like they said it was. It, for some reason, A was just prone to money coming to him for some reason. In the movie, they call him Lucky and all that, but I don't know nothing about his mom calling him Lucky. He still put in work to make that mm. actually happen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He just stayed consistent. So that's what happened on 132nd. Then when Rich Porter came home from jail, Rich Porter was on 130. 131st. What is that? What's the, what's the garage? That's 131st right there, it's right? It's on N3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rich was on 132nd over there, but he wasn't. Another thing with the King Ernest stupid talk, talking about um something about with the AZ was on spots with wherever Rich can was. You get, can you really get mad at King Ernest? He's from Philly. I don't think. How would he know? You know what I'm saying? You can't get mad yeah, at him. What is he yeah, talking about? I am. Though? I can get mad at Tell him. Tell me why. Because you're talking about something that you don't know what you're talking about. So whoever that, you paid information to to get to talk about real Harlem legacy, you need to get your money back because you got robbed because you don't know what you're talking about, my brother. And I'm here right now for all that. Big Boozy, let's slow down. I see the energy. You just turned to a Super Saiyan. Let's bring it back to regular level. Don't Super Saiyan on me. No doubt. I'm just saying. <laughs> he, he, you can't get mad. Well, you can get mad, but you gotta get, he getting wrong information, but you can't blame him. He just said what he got, right? Yeah, but that ain't right. That don't make you a right? person that's an earner or a person with honor. That turns you into what my, my brother Dame said, a chatty patty. You just talking about something you don't know what you're talking about. So real men don't speak about something unless they get facts. I'm not going to speak about nothing that I don't know is really a fact because I don't want to look crazy to people. So King Erna said that he got the locations wrong and what was going on wrong, basically. Because when Rich came home, he said Rich... He said wherever Rich set up shop, AZ was always setting up right next to him. <laughs> and I got that from my his cousins. His family. That's what he said. That don't even make sense. And he don't even know what he's talking about. So what was Once the Rich story? came home, mm -hmm. A was already on 132nd Street doing his thing. When Rich came home, he he went looking. He, he had to connect with Fritz. He went and found my boy, um, um, Jay Black. <laughs> 
and my nigga, um, <laughs> I want to make sure I say this the correct way. Once he, when he got home, because. Is, is is that serious? Long story short, when he came home, he moved he moved his operation to 131 in Seventh. He was rocking with Fritz. Fritz gave him massive amount of kilos to move. And Rich was hitting everybody with work. Queens, Brooklyn, Harlem, Baltimore, Virginia. Whatever you want to know. My boy Jay Black was one of the people, was like his one of his go-to man, was his lieutenant at the time. That was go see Black, get it. Black, get the money. Take it upstairs. Go upstairs, get this. Come back down. Give it. He was the go-to man at that time. AZ already was across the street. And my nigga Slay. So how it all happened was Slate. We was playing, well, I wasn't playing. They was playing basketball in the park. Rich Porter came looking for Slay. Found Slay. Told Slay, come here with me real quick. These are the guys from 140th. The, the crazy, one of the craziest block in Harlem, which is going to be a movie soon, too. Anyway, he found Slay. Told Slay, come with him. Slay tell Black, I'll be right back. Slay and Jay Black is like, like this. Tight, tight brothers out of that block. Slay tells Rich Porter, yo, pull my brother in. You know, bring him with me. So Jay Black meet Rich Porter. It was like a marriage. They all was, was tight. They was running a lot of that shit for Rich, period. Rich used to go in 8 o'clock at night. A lot of people don't know that. He ain't hang out. He ain't do all that shit. The rooftop and all that shit. You seen that shit in the movie. All that shit ain't real. He might have been to the rooftop once, twice, whatever. But every night, Rich go in at 8 o'clock in New Jersey is where he lived at. My boys was running all that shit for him. I was on the other side of the street. They was on that side of the street. Until we all go playing basketball for some money, 30, 40,000 a game. They was over there doing what they was doing. I was over there doing what I was doing with A. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what the... The King Erner dude is talking about When he says all that So that's why I feel I have the right To be upset Because you don't know what you're talking about And you're going to take away from our history Not saying it's good history It's not Because this right now This interview is about setting the record straight for So people can know Actually what really happened I don't want people being confused And all over the place People like King Erner confuse it Because I want the, the, the young youth that's trying to figure out what really happened, because they are in it now, they need to know like that what we came from is some bullshit. So they don't think that they can go and duplicate that shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's all about the, uh, the snitch shit that they talking about. AZ never been involved with the government. Hold on, because, you know, we, we definitely, I know, you know, I don't like to rush things. So you know, okay, I, I'm, I'm into the story. It's control like the pace. I'm with you. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. I, I gotta control you. You're moving fast. I'm you with went to you. the bathroom. You came back with a, with a different <laughs> speed. I know your wife went out there. I don't know what's going on. I said, Yo, I had y'all waiting. Let's be. So let me. Let's bring. Back. I'm saying, let's slow down a little bit. So <laughs> Rich Porter, Rich Porter had a the street AZ. So how did they come together? That's what I'm saying. How did they come oh, together? Oh well, they knew each other back then. They knew each other from, you know, little kids as well. They never came together and really done no business. They already had, A had his own connect. Oh. Rich had his own connect. It was no, they was together doing stuff together. And if they might have exchanged doing something together, I don't know nothing about yeah. little parts in our life. They probably did something together at one point in time. But A had his own situation going on. Rich had his own situation going on. When Rich got killed, Fritz wanted to turn A into what he had Rich Porter doing. Hitting everybody. But A didn't want to fuck with it. He wanted to give the nigga a thousand birds, but he didn't want to fuck with it. So 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 okay, so they already had their relationship. Where does Alpo come in? Alpo come in Lou told me about 
Well, I've definitely heard about the situation with Alpo on the bike. Because I used to see Alpo riding on the motorcycle, uh, Armin Suzuki doing wheelies, but I didn't know who that was. Coming through my block, just wheeling all the time, back and forth, up and down. We used to be like, who the fuck is that? Nice on the bikes. So I heard the story about him downstairs, A and Lou, Gangsta Lou and them was upstairs bottling up. Um, And he was waiting for them to come down so he can meet A and try and get some work. So um, they came downstairs. They seen him on the bike. Oh, shit, this nigga's down. I forgot he's downstairs. Supposed to go back upstairs, get an A for work, and give it to Alpo. So I talked to A. A said that Rich called him from jail and knew about I after L.A. got killed, which is one of Rich Porter's big homie. Um, he said that um, he met, Alpo met Rich somewhere around that time. He don't know exactly where. He said, but Rich called him and told him, yo, my nigga, you know, um, my nigga Alpo is out there. Um, he said, Rich introduced him, told A to look out for Alpo. And he said that's how it actually started with him meeting him. But I don't want to go back and forth with because Gangsta Lou is my brother. AZ is my brother. And I hate that them two is not seeing eye to eye on things. You know what I'm saying? Because I was there from day one when they was tight like this. You know what I'm saying? Period. Lou would definitely tear something up for A, and A will always make sure Lou, all right, whatever, you know. <laughs> so I don't really want to elaborate on too much on that, but that's how Alpo came around. So long story short, AZ start taking the Alpo, right? AZ was going to buy his mother a car, Volvo, a blue Volvo. I'll never forget that. You remember the blue Volvo? Yeah, Sterling. Yeah, Sterling, exactly. Mm -hmm. Went to buy her one. Alpo was with AZ. And eight, um, Rest in peace and, to Miss Margaret. Yes, Miss Margaret. Yes, Margaret. that's our that's yeah. our that's our other mother as well. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and um, it was an impulse. Y'all remember the cars, the impulse back in the days? It was an impulse spinning around on the showroom floor in there. And he said Alpo was you know watching, looking at the car. Was like, yo, that shit, damn, that shit mean. And he was like, yeah, you you want that? He was like, he said, Alpo was like, yeah, 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 I want it. He said, he asked the dealer how much it cost. He said, 18000 He said, all right, wrap that up for my nigga. Hmm. He said, I had the 18000 in my pocket already. That wasn't nothing. And he bought the car for Poe. And I remember that car. I couldn't remember which one it was, but he just told me the other day when I just talked to him. Well, yesterday, actually, what it was. And he said he bought it for him. And... Alpo never ever looked back after that. Getting a lot of money, they used to do bus rides. They used to do a lot of like fireworks and stuff for the kids. Fourth of July, all that was the good, good, good side that I could speak about with that relationship. You know what I'm saying? He never looked back, man. He was doing his thing with A until Rich came home. So when Rich came home. I don't know when they actually started rocking together, Alpo and Rich, but they was rocking together. Everybody knew that they got real tight when they bought twin matching uh, Porsches, 944s, twin turbo joints, fruit punch. It's Call when, shit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What's good, Flip? I'm listening now. Nah, now nah, I'm listening. I'm not. Okay. I, this, so, this, this, this is like a movie. So, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so they got, they got, they got close. Mm -hmm. And then, um, what type of guy was Alpo? Was he, as the movie predicted? Yeah, he flashy, was, flamboyant. He, definitely flashy. Definitely flamboyant. Everything they say. Show. He used to take them, uh, fuck girls, film them, and show it in the rooftop in the little lunchroom <laughs> area. He did all that shit. Um. Definitely not scared. Still not scared to this day. You know what I'm saying? And if you you know, if you ain't been hearing, he's been out. 
you know, looking for niggas and telling niggas, keep my name out your mouth. You know, he always been like that. He always been like that. I heard he's taking pictures with people as well. Take, yeah, they taking pictures. He seen me. Me and my brother was together, July it's my birthday, 14th July. for his birthday. And I was in the patio section of, uh, what's that spot we was at? We was in Cali's. Oh, up Cali's. In Harlem. In Harlem. And I was on the patio talking to my sister, Ray. And me and her was just chilling. And then one of, you know, my peers from childhood tapped me on the shoulder and said, yo, Poe want to holler at you. He wanted to say hi to you, my nigga. I was like, who? He was like, Alpo. You know Alpo, right? I said, yeah, I know. I Where he at? I'm looking back in the club. He was like, he right there. And I looked over, and he was like, like, what's good? I was like, oh, yeah, I know, Paul. All right, tell him I'm coming. So, you know me, I'm I'm just a cordial dude, period. I'm going to always keep it cordial with anybody. That's just, just me. So I said, all right, I'm coming. Me and sis walked out there. Walked over to him. He's like, "What up?" He said, "What's he said? What's up, nigga? You still look the same." I was like, "Yeah, no doubt, my G. Ain't nothing changing. I'm gonna always look the same. It's only gonna get better." He was like, "That's what's up." I shook his hand, and then I walked off. My brother and them was still sitting over there. All my other homies, we, we was out there celebrating. We had about twenty niggas over there with us, just partying, having fun. And he was standing out there, you know, still talking to people. And niggas is over there chilling. So. I think, nah, they wasn't taking pictures at that time, but I heard about the picture taken. So you said the basketball games and all that shit. And been to the pictures. basketball games. Me personally, no disrespect to him, I can't take a picture with you because Rich Porter's sister is my sister. She watched me grow up. Mm -hmm. Pat Porter's my Big sister. Pat. And it's like, if I do that, I'm going against that you actually killed my brother, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever it might have been about, I still, I couldn't, I can't do that because she's my sister. That's my friend. My loyalty relies on, on lives with her. You know what I'm saying? Period, point blank. And even, even if she wasn't my sister, I still wouldn't do it because of the things you've done already, you know? Alpo was somebody I used to look up to. Like, damn, I'm gonna be like him. He's another reason what made me want to go hard and get money, have my own spots and all that shit and do, you know what I'm saying? And then when you went and did what you did, I don't care where you did it at, you did it in, on the DC niggas, it's still, you know, it don't stand for what we grew up. You're not supposed to tell on no man. Why, did he, why do you think, do you take his reason for what he did to Rich you heard it. We all heard it. Do, is that the true reason? Do you do? Because that's his reason. He was dead, so you have to no choice but to believe him. Not really, but back then, you know, niggas was living off movies too. A nigga violate you, kill him, which was stupid. You know what I'm saying? You don't do that, and you don't kill nobody you love because they wouldn't tell you that they had some work for you, and you keep asking them to find out why. Why you didn't tell them? That's why I'm asking you. I'm asking you because, nigga, I found out from so-and-so, so-and-so. Give him a chance to say, I ain't tell you because the shit was whack. I gave it back. Or somebody robbed me for it. You don't even know if he really had the work or if that other man was lying. So why would you automatically think your brother that you love was lying to you? And you just killed them because you thought that if he lied to me about something that simple... No telling what he'll do later on to me, take me down the road. You can cut him off before that ever happened to you. Don't just don't fuck with him no more. But us knowing Rich Porter was getting his own work from everybody else. From, I mean from Fritz. Now, if Fritz probably didn't give him no work, this is just me hypothetically speaking, if he wasn't giving you no work, he might have went somewhere else to get some work until his original connect got some work, right? Mm -hmm. So I can't see how Alpo was bigger than Rich Porter at the time. Rich Porter is that nigga giving you work. He was giving you work to go to D.C., 100 birds to go do and sell in one week and come back. And, and So to answer your question, what AZ told me was he think that um, Alpo did that because 
while Rich's little brother was kidnapped, he gave Alpo the birds to go get the money so when you come back, pay the kidnappers for his brother. AZ said that he think that Alpo did that to keep the money. You kill Rich Porter, keep the money, they're going to think the kidnappers did it. Killed Rich Porter because that's what was going on right then. That's deep. But how did people find out that? How did the assumptions come that Alpo did it? Because that's why I asked Lou the same thing. But Lou said, you know, I don't want to tell. I'm going to mess up my. When we found mm -hmm. out Rich was dead, you know, I was a little nigga at the time and they, and I was in deep. So it was like we had to stay in because we didn't know where it was coming from, the kidnapper. So I had to stay in. I couldn't be out like that. Because we don't know where it's coming from. Okay. Me and a few other people that was affiliated. So when I seen, when we found out Rich was dead, I came outside of my building and A was on the corner. A was like, um, man, I just seen a nigga Alpo, man. They got scratches on his neck. That nigga might be the one that killed Rich, man. Mm. Just I like was, that. That's what he told me out of his mouth. Can't make this shit up. You know what I'm saying? And... This another thing with the King Erna. Don't know what the fuck you talking about, ass nigga. <laughs> Come on, what you getting at this? Okay, okay, man. Nah, yeah, because this, 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 he bro. said, AZ, um, why he ain't do nothing to Alpo if you thought that he killed your man? He was just making an assumption because he still didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So, how would he just get at a, a, a person? Right. right then and there if he don't really know he was just making an assumption so i don't like the fact that you throwing that out there but then i'll post say he got scratches on his neck because he was rich. fucking the girl yeah. and all that because when he was talking hey what up my nigga what's good got it yeah rich dead and this happened he's like word he's like you know just calm regular conversation and then he was like damn you got the scratches on you my nigga he said i was fucking a bitch last night da -da 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 -da. so if a nigga tell you he was fucking a bitch that mean he was fucking a bitch. Or I had a fight. He had a fight. That don't mean that he actually supposed to react on this person. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you think that he killed Rich. So stop saying that. Stop trying to make yourself look like you're talking about something that's real. Stop confusing the audience with what reality really is. But we can't blame him because he don't know. He's not from Harlem. That's from why you ain't supposed to speak on it. Big Especially facts. when you ain't from here. So okay. why would you speak on something you don't know? Okay. And don't call a person a rat if you don't see paperwork. If I don't see paperwork, I ain't calling nobody no rat. But but okay, but hold up, hold up, hold up. Now we talking about when A Z got shot and they said that he right. told on somebody. The guys that shot him. There's a difference in snitching and being a victim. There's a difference. That's it's very, funny. very big difference. All right, the day before he got shot, AZ, Rich Porter, all of them was playing basketball. I was supposed to go with A and get something. I'm going to just say something that night. But they started talking shit, and they wanted to play a game of basketball. So I'm like, man, fuck that. We, they do this shit all the time. I'm breaking out. Me and my boys go riding around having fun. I'm like, man, let's go back over there and see if they still over there. Go back over there. They all gone. I'm like, shit, I know where he at. He in the Bronx at the stash house where he do his thing at so we about to go over there me and my boy he told me, man i'm tired i'm like yeah you're right i'll get that shit from that nigga tomorrow i go home go to sleep my mom's wake me up boosie get up az is on the news he's been shot up his people dead in the house i was like mom stop playing she was like get up shaking me he's on the news right now i get up go look at the tv I see them pulling my boy out. It's live news, pulling him out on, on the stretcher, getting into the, the joint. So to, to elaborate on what you were saying, snitching is when you do a crime with somebody and then to get out of snit, to get out of you being charged or going to jail, you tell on that person. He didn't do a crime with them, them dudes. And the dude... Kevin used to go with AZ's sister. 
That was her boyfriend. So he came home, AZ looked out for him, was giving him work, letting him bottle up, paying him two, three thousand dollars just sitting at a damn table. And the other two dudes was his boys. So if A wanted to go to war with them niggas, he couldn't. How he gonna go to war with somebody he don't know? Only one he would have known was Kevin. Only way we could have made that happen is we if we would have got Kevin. We, me, Rich Porter, me, Rich Porter, my brother, Keith Caesar, he's locked up now in North Carolina doing life for a murder right now, trying to get him out of jail. And and two other cats. Alpo seen the dude, Kevin. Alpo told the nigga, yo, A shot up. I mean, A got shot up, my nigga. Yo, come to the block. Alpo was really trying to lure him to where we is at. He never came. So we all get together on the block. I get with, with Rich. Rich, me and my boy Keith C is the one that was supposed to take, was going to go with me to the house that night. I was supposed to be in that house. Mm -hmm. My boy Rick, which is Kato's brother, if it wasn't for him, A would have been dead. Um, He would have died in that house. Rick and my boy, his name is Kate. Um, Calio, they went up to the house in the Bronx. A said, damn, I forgot to get bottles. Gave them money. Calio and my boy Rick to go get bottles. The girl that the dumb King Erna nigga talking about, the young girl, she jumped out the cab. And he was like, "What? what's going on? She was, you know, I don't want to say stalking, but in love with him. And, you know, he wasn't really paying her no attention like that. But she knew about the little hideaway house he didn't even know she was coming and seeing it was like oh all right come on god damn so that's how she was there so he gets there normally they say joanne joanne look out the window what's going on curse you out first she was the older lady cool lady curse you out and then throw the key down for you to come up he was yelling joanne the key just come flying out the window he didn't never see her. He was like, man, she probably drunk. Come on, man. They go in, sent my boy and them to get bottles. Get upstairs, door open, putting guns on them. Him, her, my boy, Charlie C. Charlie C, I killed the, the, the uh, Joanne, other two friends. The girl didn't get killed because she was running around the room like, get off me, wouldn't. So they ain't hit her in the head right. A was like, they kept telling him, open the safe. The Kevin nigga told him, there's a lot of money in that house, and that's why they did that job. And the job was to kill everybody because they know Kevin. So, they, like the King Erna nigga saying, once again, with the AZ was soft, they ain't need no guns and all that to do all that. They did because Kevin, um, A no Kevin. So if that shit would have happened, after that, it's going to be a problem. Because at that time, Alpo, Rich Porter, and Gangsta Lou, myself, all my team, all my niggas would have jumped off the building for AZ at this time. He was still that nigga. So it was no he soft and all that shit ever. So anyway, um, so uh, while, they, while they in there... They wouldn't, they pistol whipping him, pistol whipping, open the safe. He wouldn't open the safe. He said he knew if he opened the safe, they would have killed him. Yeah. They would have killed him. He said, I ain't opening no safe. He said, I got money somewhere else. I'll take y'all to get some real money. There's no money in that safe. I'm telling y'all, this is just little shit that I be doing. And they was, and the, the nigga Kevin was like, yo, he going to take us to get some real money. He's going to take us to get some real money. The nigga ain't paid in full. His name was Calvin that played that part. But his real name in real life, the nigga that played the part, name was Kevin. That's crazy. Kermit, right? His name was Kevin. Nothing yeah, the, the Kermit, Kermit. the yeah. Kermit nigga that Cam was calling him. His yeah. name in real life is Kevin. Mm -hmm. So, they was like, word? All right, fuck that. Take everybody in the back. The girl wouldn't go in the back. Take him in the bathroom and wash his face. Because they've been pistol whipping A. So why he in there washing his face? Because he got to go out in the street. A told me, I just wanted them to get me out to the street. I knew they was going to kill me. I was going to take off running. And they had to kill me running. And maybe some people at least see it. Fuck that. But he was washing his face off. 
And um, he told nigga, you a sucker, telling that to Kevin. Kevin holding the tech while A washing his face, and everybody, they taking the other people in the back. And uh, well, as he washing his face, he was like, man, you a sucker. The nigga Kevin told him, man, nah, you weren't treating me right. Which, this is a nigga that was paying them two, 3000 whenever they go sit down at a table right. in one night, giving you your own work to go to your own block. You just came home from jail, helping you out. Why the fuck would you do some dumb shit like that, right? So he told him, nah, you weren't treating me right. He said he was doing his shoulders all like that. And, you know, Kevin used to have the waves like he a little fly nigga. Anyway, A said he heard the gunshots. Bow, bow. He said right there he grabbed the gun with Kevin. They tussling. He said he almost had it out of his hand. He said, next thing you know, he said he must have been shot after that. Somebody came in there and shot him. Hit him in the head. He got hit seven times. The wrist, the leg, the neck, the head. He said he was just, he just said he felt weariness. Lay down, lay down. That's what he said. And it, and it fucked me up that I went and seen my fucking nigga in the hospital. His head was swole like a watermelon. After the operation with the incision, you can see where they did it around the middle part of his head. Where they sewed his head back up. That shit kind of fucked me up. So, like I said, me, Rich Porter, a few other my friends. Rich Porter, you know, when Kevin, I mean, when Kevin ain't never come around, we went to his house and was waiting for him. Rich Porter called us down there. He gave everybody two of them toys, two toys apiece, and we was waiting for him to come. Sitting across the street in this park, waiting at his mom's house. He lived there. So, let me explain to you how real Rich Porter is. He will have niggas tore up if you're fucking with him. He gonna have you tore up, sent out of here. But he was a good dude, only if you fuck with him. But, get back to what I'm talking about, while we sitting over there waiting, Alpo would pull up. Y'all ain't seen him yet? Nah, he'd drive off, go back to the block, seeing if the nigga coming over there. Come back again. Y'all, y'all, he ain't come? Nope. So, one of the other guys was like, yo, man, fuck that. We gonna go upstairs and get his mom's. Fuck that. This is how real Rich Porter is. No, we not doing that. That lady ain't got nothing to do with none of this shit. Mm -hmm. We not doing that. And A just confirmed to me, because Rich was like, man, we out, man. Fuck that. A just confirmed to me yesterday that he the one told Rich, man, leave that shit alone, because they gonna be on us, and they gonna come get at me. If any of that shit happened, just chill. A just told me that yesterday. So that's why. And 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 then I was sitting at the phone booth. We used to have a phone booth on our block where we used to just have people calling out there for us because cell phones wasn't really popping like that. Or remember the big, dumb, stupid cell phones back then? <laughs> so we always used to have people call, call the cell, you know, call the block girls and all that shit, whatever. So... I'm particular this particular day I'm just standing by the phone and the ring, I answer it. And he was like, Hello, yo, who this? I said, This Boosie. Who this? He was like, Yo, don't worry about all that. Just tell Junior that shit that just happened to him, keep that shit out the street. I know Kevin voice, cause I know him personally. You know what I'm saying? I said, keep what out the street? You know he know what I'm talking about. I said, yeah, but where you at? He said, Don't worry about all that. I was like, man, fuck you, nigga. Fuck out of here. And I hung the phone up on him. So he ran. I don't know. I can't remember if he got he turned himself in or got locked up in Kentucky somewhere. I don't know how they caught the other two guys. I don't. So my thing is this. How can a man snitch on somebody he don't know? He didn't know them other two guys, right? Only way he would have known if we'd have got Kevin and had him somewhere and make him tell us. Who we going to war with? We don't know who we going to war with at all. We don't know. But Kevin got caught. So A can't be no snitch to... Somebody shooting him. He didn't do a crime with him. At all. At all. So, he had all right to either let's handle it in the street or do it like this. This nigga, Kevin, know everything about A family. Everything. Where he lived at, all, all that. Like, what more can he do? And not only that, because I don't condone snitching at all. But that's not considered snitching he was a victim of 
a crime where he could have got his life took and his people. That lady that got killed was like an aunt to him where he was leaving to work at. Another thing with the King Earner, you don't know what you're talking about. You're watching TV, talking about fucking the young girl, the house where she, she called him lucky. No, it was an older lady, what was which was like an aunt to him. Her name was Joanne. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the shit that I'm saying. I don't want the people out here to get this legacy construed because we're going to take this shit to another level. We want to go to colleges. We want to teach people about that shit ain't the life. We really live that shit. We really probably not even supposed to be here. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I keep going back to the earner dude. I don't, I don't know him. I don't got no problem with him. I just have a problem with you saying the wrong stuff. And even if A wasn't my friend or my brother, I was still, you know, checking nigga when don't talk about people that you don't know. I don't even want to hear a nigga telling me nothing about another nigga and you really don't know the truth. And I ain't really with all that. You gossiping. You doing your, your blog shit or whatever you want to call it, your journalism shit, but you ain't doing it right. Get Talk about some shit you really know about. Stay away from some shit where you wasn't there. For real. Flip and, got the wave popping now. And I've been quiet for a long time watching, watching, and I never said nothing. Niggas was like, yo, you got to go say something. And A being quiet, and I don't like that shit. That's my brother. Like, don't, 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 don't do that. He make me mad. I told him that yesterday. All the shit we been ever mad at each other and all that. It's all good. But my nigga, it's time for you to come out and speak. All the way to with the Kevin Child situation. You gotta speak. For real. Well the Kevin cause it's either the interview with Funkmaster Flex. Right. I didn't see the interview. I'm just gonna say it. I right seen now. it. And I what, ain't like it. What did he say? He was saying A was working with the government. He said A name was on his paperwork. The A told on Kevin Childs. No, he said he didn't tell on him. He just said he seen A's name on it. And he said he going to show the paperwork and he's going to give it to Flex and it can be shown, which was never, ever produced. I didn't see it, which I know as a kid growing up with A, he never did no business with Kevin Childs. When I heard that, I was in North Carolina, and I'm telling my homies that don't know A's, Kevin Childs, out for nobody. These are my little homies from down there that be around me. I'm like... I ain't never did business with Kevin Childs. Like, why would you say that? But speaking in defense of Kevin Childs, he might have seen AZ name on there. Everybody know how the feds play. They have a nigga on the stand saying, you did this, you did that. He bought this from you. He bought that from you. And it's not real just to get a conviction. And that's how they play. So they might throw a name in the paperwork just to see if you bite to it while you under pressure in their arms, in their, you know, in their uh situation, in their prison, jail, whatever you want to call it. So they'll put a person name in that. So it's up for you to decide, is this shit real or not? You know what I'm saying? You know how the feds play. They'll play people against each other. So that's not cool. That ain't, that ain't cool for you to actually think that AZ actually did that. And once again, I talked to A, these are the words out of his mouth. Quoting, I never been in a federal or a government situation. One thing about the government with AZ, they mad they didn't catch him when he was rocking. They got everybody else. They might've won Rich Porter, but he got killed. They got one, Alpo. AZ never been in federal custody for him to ever have to tell on anybody if he wanted to. He never been in a situation. They sent in a agent, nigga name was Winston. Remember Mom Style, the group? The nigga stole all of their all of their um um Master. masters. Stole mm. all the fucking masters because they was being popular. They was about to be the biggest rap group in the game. N.W.A. was going at them. N.W.A. made diss records to A.Z. and them. They was about to be out of here. Stole all the masters. The feds sent them in. Gangsta Lou caught the nigga. Pistol whipped the nigga up and all. I'm surprised he didn't tell you about that. He sent the nigga somewhere. Pistol whipped the nigga named Winston, an African nigga. They did that so A and them could not sell no more because I think Sony wanted to sign them. 
and was about to get him some big money. And that's what A was saying of it yesterday too to me. He was like, I did the music shit so we didn't have to fucking hustle no more. I was tired of hustling. Shit wasn't about nothing after he got shot up. So that's where all that shit came about. All right, so so after, after you know, after A gets hit, after Rich Porter, you know, what, what, what happens then? As far as what? With, with you. After what? Say that again now. A, a gets hit, you know, we, we spoke about Rich Porter getting hit. Like, what, what happens with you after that? What do you do after that? When Rich Porter got killed? Yeah. Um, We didn't know what was going on. I had Rich Porter. He had a Mazda, a black one. A 323. I had that shit riding around for about a week and two. A week or two. We still know what's going on. We trying to figure it out. So later on after that, um, trying to think what I did after that. I probably, no, I think I opened up Hustling in the Street on um, 142nd between Broadway and Amsterdam. I was selling crack at the time, $2 bottles. $2 two dollars. $2. You could buy crack for $2. If I felt in a good mood, I'd sell it for $1. And I was doing about ten to 20000 a day. Mm. Me and my team. Can't make this up. Um, it started getting hot. Police running in there. Niggas going to jail. I'm bailing all my team out. Shit like that. I left and went upstate New York. Started hustling up there. I met my nigga Pistol Pete. I don't know if y'all familiar with him mm -hmm. from Soundview. Good, uh, the sex money murder. That's like, that's my family. He wasn't Pistol Pete at that time. I started hustling up there, doing my thing up there. Come back to Harlem because it got hot up there. I started going to VA, making money in VA, and then I caught a bid going to VA mm. on the highway. And I was facing 60 years. Hmm. And I took it to trial because I knew they had nothing on me. And I got five years. I did I did three years on that. Yeah, you keep going. I did three years from 92 to 95. I came home in 95. And I went down to North Carolina. My mom's moved to North Carolina. I went down there with her mm. as my rock, my background to get myself established. Yeah. And after I did that, I opened up, no, I moved to a little spot called Albemarle near Charlotte. Moved in Charlotte and then I opened up three clubs in Durham. I went to Chapel uh -huh. Hill. I moved to Chapel Hill. I met a girl down there, and I moved to Chapel Hill. Me and her was together for five to six years. I met some friends that was in Durham that used to live up here. I started throwing a lot of parties. So I started being known, well known for the parties and making a lot of, like, a lot of money doing that. So I opened up my own club, mm -hmm. which led to me opening up three clubs all together. And... Besides the Pay the Full movie, we did the Pay the Full movie in, when I came home, too. Uh, they flew me out to Canada. Dame and my boy Jay Black sent for me to come out there because they know I knew the actual guys who the actors was portraying to be. So right. we was over there for three months in Canada. Canada, Toronto, it looks like Harlem. Mm. And, you know, they did that because it's cheaper to film over there. And, you know, that was a $13 million budget. So, we did the last two, three weeks here in Harlem. Everybody think it was actually done in Harlem. It wasn't. It was done in Canada. Wow. I, have, I have a question. You know, I was just listening. You know, um, let's go back a little bit. One more question. And that is, <clears throat> this was I was thinking. In the movie, they said that Rich asked AZ for something to get his brother out to help to, to pay to the kidnappers to get back his brother. Is that true? And if A was supposed to have it, in my opinion, why A didn't give him what he's supposed to have? Because apparently AZ was messing with Rich's sister, correct? That was his wife. That's, that was she his lived wife. in the building with us. Baby downstairs. Mama. Baby mama, wifey, all of the above. Respect, respect. Daughter to Laurel, shout out to Laurel. Respect, yep. respect mm -hmm. to everybody. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, Flags. like, is that part true? 
Did he try to give him something? Like, you know, what was... He didn't have to because he had Fritz in the pocket already. Gotcha. Fritz gave him what he needed to have. Gotcha. And he gave it to Poe to go and get the money and bring it back. Mm. So, if anything different from that, and I, you know, it's other certain things that I really don't know all about, but that's why they put that in the movie because that's more true than maybe other people wanted to help and give money. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't even, I don't know. Maybe A, he might have asked A, and if he did, A going to give you some money. One thing about A, he's he always give people money. How did they find out who killed Sonny? His name was Sonny? What was his brother? Darnell. 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 How did they find out? Um, How they find out? His, his, his Uncle Apples was basically... The fucking, you know, inside. The uncle, the uncle like, did the shit. Yeah. The uncle set it up. He was supposed to be going to school. And the uncle was, what was, the name? The was Apples, working right? for, yeah, I think it's Apples. Apples. But the uncle was Preacher. uh working with Preacher. Preacher was well known for starting niggas. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody talk about Preacher, but I, I really don't, you know, people ask me, you don't know about Preacher's story. I really don't know about his story. I really don't know about him. Oh, I know all about him. His son was my homeboy. But um, is that the guy that they said that allegedly with Kevin Child's moms? Oh, that's uh, uh, that was somebody else. Somebody that okay. was somebody else from the Bronx, I think. Oh, okay. That's totally different. Pardon me. See, that's what I'm saying. It's good that I ask. I don't want to say the wrong shit. Yeah. To have yeah. niggas like <laughs> come up here and say Queens flip putting out the wrong information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But preach real quick, real quick. Um, so how did they find out? Do you know how they found out? It was uncle. Did he tell on himself? Did they investigation? I can't remember exactly how the mm. fuck that happened. That's a good question. Okay, thank you. Because they found, once once they knew Rich was dead, they went on to kill Darnell. They chopped his finger off to show that they ain't playing, right? So they already automatically, Abe was saying to me, like, they automatically should have known Darnell was dead after that because they let him talk to the mother. Mom, I'm, man, cut my finger. Mom, help me. Please help me. That actually happened, and that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know exactly how they found Did out. You see that on the news and shit back in the days? That shit was front page paper and all. I'm 32 years old, man. Oh, my, yeah. bad. my bad. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly. I ain't saying you look old and all that. Yeah, you, I ain't saying that. You said I look old. You said I look old. You said I look old, nigga. It's all right, man. You told me you was in your 40s, nigga. I said you look good. <laughs> and you trying to violate my shit, but it's good. It's <laughs> so wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. So, so, um... So that so all that shit happened, um, and um, it, unfortunate situation, unfortunate, very events. unfortunate. Darnell, um, that's that's one of like my little brother, like for real. And we we is, we the same age back. Like when he used to come to the block yeah. on his pedal bike, like AZ brother, like that's my best friend. Just passed. When was that last year? Mm-hmm. My man Wayne, that was a low brother. Talking to my, talk a little closer. Oh, like, yeah. all right, cause I remember you. You was yeah. telling Shay, my man. Shout out to my man Shay Davis. She was like, Yo, Shay, you can you can come up to the mic and all that, <laughs> yeah, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, bro, like nah, Borg, God bless the dead. That's AZ little brother. That's my man. Like when he was saying that there was times when that shit was going down, he couldn't come out. Mm -hmm. I used to have to walk to elementary school, but we walked every day. They ain't let my nigga outside no more because that was a little brother right. when all that shit was going down, when Darnell got kidnapped and all that. So I was nervous. Like, our block was abandoned buildings and, and dark buildings back then. You know, we ain't had nothing but a bunch of crackheads and shit running around. So that shit... Man. How long it took for them to find Darnell's body? Right after Rich got killed, yeah. they chopped... Darnell up, I think. Yeah, they, they put him in bags and about a hundred bags. They found them shit. like uh, right Crack after. Crackhead nigga found them. Kind of right after. Going through the garbage. That happened. Hmm. Which is that shit is like that's crazy. It's yeah. fucked up situation. Yeah, man. Fucked up. Um, I was about that. Pre preacher, who, who was he? Did you know about him? You don't have to get to him. He was. If you don't he, want he was. Uh, he, he was. Well, he he'll put the he had a police working for him. They'll do their homework on you if you get money. Then they'll come tap you on the shoulder, you know. <laughs> Let me uh, I'll let you. Let me get ten thousand a week. If not, mm. something gonna happen to one of your niggas. And if you don't pay it, something gonna happen to one of them niggas. Period. And he was the type that 
when they did the investigation on they they found he had an abandoned building where he had a lot of dead people off of uh in Bradhurst. I can't make this up. The, we can't. We were just getting up top. Watching the Fed, the not the Feds, the yeah, the Feds was out there. The fucking news, they was pulling bodies out. They would actually really take people, wrap them up, pour uh, syrup on them so the rats could eat them in the building and all that shit. He not was the, not, not one of them. You, not to cut you, we was we was just getting up top one time. I don't know if you remember when that shit was going down when they had the building. They was filming. Um, what was the what's the nigga name Malik uh something with the big lips New York uh oh, yeah, New York. Yeah, he did, huh? he, yeah he just said yeah they was York. filming a, a scene and they couldn't do it because that's that day that that shit was happening the was they going, was pulling out all pulling the bodies out the bodies out of they there. said they had niggas with clothes on skeletons with old money and jewelry on but skeletons his son was my boy named Sid he used to come hang out with us on our block everybody used to come to our block hang out and we knew who his father was you know what I'm saying and. He always hung out with us, and he always wanted to sell us guns all the time. After seeing some of the documentaries, now I see what the fuck that nigga was doing. <laughs> you selling us guns that your pops and them done tore niggas up with, my nigga. Like, that's crazy. And now they got him in documentaries where he was snitching. Who? Sid, his son, Preacher's son. So where's Preacher now? He's locked up. I'm, he's, he's in the Fed joint right now. Is he his life? He, yeah, I think he got life. Yeah, he definitely should have life because he did a lot of, a lot of treacherous shit. Nigga was like one of the most ruthless niggas back then at that time, extorting a lot of people, a lot of people that supposed to have money, that was supposed to have been tough. So, he's def, he definitely probably he should have life. But he, uh, I think he said, he told his kids to snitch on him so they can get out. Preacher did that? Hmm. Yeah. Told Sid and the daughter. The daughter got locked up too. To, to tell on him so they can get out. My homeboy used to go with his daughter. So I don't know how far that went. But yeah. I, the daughter might be home. I don't know if Sid is home. And you met him before, Preacher? Yeah, several times. I've been in the presence of him several times. I mean, he was one of those guys back in the days. Yeah, he was definitely one of them guys. Like, nothing to play with. If you about your business, handle your business. If he's fucking with you, you better handle your business. Because if not, you're going to walk it, all over. And it, and it was a crew of them. Yeah, he had. A, he definitely had a crew. You do your, you can, it's, it, they got the documentaries out on that, how he was moving. That yeah, shit actually it. on the documentary channel about him, for real, how he was moving. So it ain't, it ain't no play play. But facts. Well, yo, so we spoke about you know all the crazy you know stories and that let's bring like to something more positive now. So you got, you had you had the clubs and stuff going on. Well, now I'm um I'm in the trucking business. I'm doing an eighteen wheeler trucking company, Metro Oh, Line. hold on, Are you get yeah. <laughs> Gotta watch. Oh man. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. That's a good business. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Smart guy. I got to watch you, yeah. man. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna, I got to watch your moves, man. Yeah. Very <laughs> slick. Yeah. Okay. I'm working with my brother Damon Dash. That's my family. We got a new um, TV network that we working on in Charlotte. Well, we ain't working on. It. It's a done deal. Mm. We're about to uh, in four weeks. We about to uh, launch. We going forward with that DDTV. We got his. Uh, the um dame dash studios dot com it's like netflix mm. anybody can go subscribe to that dame dash studios dot com and you'll see all the movies the paid and full and other movie that we did honor up i i don't know if y'all familiar with that that was one we dropped in february came out the same day with um black panther we sold out theaters everywhere okay um we got the liquor um dusko wine dusko blue wine and the dusko whiskey um i have my artist Spitter, my brother Double A, Sean Boy Double. Um, I got a female group that's getting ready to kill the kill the kill the game. BWA, mm -hmm. bitches with attitude. Oh, two wow. young girls and they talking that shit. Mm. And my son doing this thing, Thriller, Trey Thriller, and uh, you know, I'll be uh pushing the Blue Rock Blue Rock Records. You know, Dame. 
Rockefeller Records is over, so Dame created Blue Rock Records. And we taking that to the next level. Dame don't really care about the music no more. He want to do his movies. That's what we got. We got some movies coming out. Mm -hmm. We got a movie called Coach that we shot already. It's done. We shot in North Carolina. He's at the editing board with that right now. That's a mm -hmm. movie that me and him and my boy Jay Black partnered up with. Mm -hmm. um, he got the movie The List and um, a few other movies. But we, we about to just do a whole bunch of movies that's coming back to back. So, you know, all that blackballing shit the niggas talking about, blackballing Dame Dash and all that dumb shit. Can't blackball a motherfucker that put their own money up. You know what mm. I'm saying? So that's what we got coming right now. So I handle, you know, the Blue Rock movement with my boy Jay Black. And um, what else we doing? I got a, a, a clothing line, Carolina Lady. All the stuff I'm telling you is, like, active right now. It's right. not no trying to do something. All this stuff is active, what we doing. So um, Big facts. When the music, Shine Boy Double. Man. Yeah, man. that's a fact. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. this guy and right here, man. <laughs> we working. That's what's up, man. So, um, yeah, we working. So, what would you tell a, a um? You know, I, I think I asked who, who did I asked before. I asked one of the, the last guests we had. Um, like, what would you tell y yourself if you could tell your, your uh, younger version of yourself some some advice right now? Like, what would right. you say? And that's, I'm glad you asked that question because that's what this is, here is all about. Right, right. I ain't up here to assassinate nobody character. I ain't up here to um, glorify mm -hmm. none of that shit we did back in the day. That shit is like, thank God we came up out of it. So the advice that I would give is leave the streets alone definitely now because it's over. It's mm -hmm. too much snitching going on. We have no wins. It's called us against us now. The police don't even have to work no more. Right. Your best friend might leave your house, get caught doing some dumb shit. You don't even know that he got caught up. Then mm -hmm. he come back around you tomorrow. The police put him right back out in the street working. And now you get 10, 20 years with your friend that, you know, just fucked your whole life up. And it's at the blink of an eye. That mm -hmm. game is over with. That's why AZ wrote the book, The Game Is Over. Excuse me, because all naturality, it is. Niggas. So get a job. I, you would rather get a job because mm. once you get in the in them police hands, they got somewhere. They they not letting you go. It's easy to get in there and hard to get out. They said they got a bed for everybody. Everybody, and if they mm. don't got one for everybody, they pile you up on each other. Niggas is working from the inside. Niggas is getting niggas locked up. That's inside. That's getting niggas on the street locked up, bro. Yeah, they say that. It's twisted. The government mm -hmm. program is called Ghosts. It's not a. Um, it's Ghost um, Dope. It's when when you are a, a comp, when you are an informant and they keep what they call it a witness protection. They get paid two hundred fifty thousand a year. It's called a Ghost pro, um, thing, um, Ghost program. Hmm. So if y'all not if you, if if you ain't ready to go to jail, chill out, having fun, fucking girls. Getting money with jewelry and all that shit. That shit is good until they catch you. When they catch you, all that shit go out the window. Right, right. Period. Anybody that's a rat and a snitch that was that nigga back then, once you rat and snitch, all that beautiful shit you did back then, that's out the window. You are not no longer that nigga no more. So my point to that is, why do it? If you see people doing it already, it. why fuck with it? Right. If I see a nigga smoke crack, I see a nigga smoke, her uh, shoot heroin, sniff heroin, and they look horrible and terrible. Why do I want to do that? Mm. Ain't you not you you not better than that person that look fucked up? You not better than that nigga that was getting money. Now he got fifty years. Why he got fifty years? You ain't better than that other nigga that was getting a lot of money. Now he got twenty years. What make you think you can do it better? Mm. You can't. It just take them one time to catch you. That's it. One police might work 20 years. He quit. He going to pass the case on to the new police until they get you. So it just take them one time to catch you. Leave that world alone. It's, 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 it, don't, it don't make sense, man. That's my advice. How different is Harlem now from when, when, when you were younger? Shit, you, you, shit, was, shit is different. Shit is different? 
Shit all the way different. <laughs> That's a fact. Totally different. You got white people not even scared to walk around no more. Like, like what? Back then, you ain't get no white person to walk through Harlem like that. Looking at you like this out, this out, we on our block, you know, in front of our building. <laughs> Yeah. They coming out the joint looking at us like, what y'all doing on this corner? And I ain't even gonna lie, I ain't mad at it. I like the way it look. It mm. looks good. It's just different. Back then a building was abandoned and it cost one dollar. And guess what? We ain't take advantage of it as black people. We mm. should have bought them buildings. One of my friends did. They bought it and they was going in there every day trying to work and get it up to park. I used to watch them cross the street from my, my building with their hard hats on. Some friends I grew up with. They did the right thing, but they didn't finish the business part. The business part was to go get some loans and actually do it the right way. Mm. But they tried, so I give them an E for effort. Now, all the white people got them buildings, hmm. fixed them up, and guess what? It costs two, 3000 just to live in a fucking one bedroom or two bedroom. My house, we used to pay $500, three bedroom. My moms and pops used to pay. Wow. That shit is $1,500 right now in the hood of Harlem, where they do that at? Hmm. That's crazy. Well, <clears throat> is there anything before we sign out? Is there anything else you have to say to people, or is there anything else you guys want to say that you may have forgotten to say? I, 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 you know, I'm stuck into the story. You know, I just can't wait home, wait to go home and put this together. You know yeah. how I do. Well. One other thing that I'm doing, I'm gonna do a uh, a spinoff to Paid in Full. I'm actually getting a mm. script written right now, and it's gonna be a series like Power. It's called Money Mitch. That's gonna be fire. I'm doing the Money Mitch story. I got the permission from my brother Dame Dash. He told me do what I need to do. That's another thing. Mm. He's like a Az in his time. He. If he can help you make some money, he's going to help you make some money. One of the realest niggas I know. Which, actually, I'm the one that brought A back down to uh, to Dane Art Gallery when he had it a couple years, two years ago, maybe three years ago or whatever. Put them back together because he thought A said something like, I don't like the movie. I ain't like it. Which A didn't like the movie because they changed it, you know, a lot of things around from when he sold it to Dame. And the movie was called Trapped. He wrote it before I went to jail. And when I came home, he sold it to Dame and them and they turned it into Pay the Fool. When we was filming the movie, I didn't even know it was gonna be a classic the way it is. Mm. So, but anyway, we are doing the series, Money Mitch. That's Money getting ready, Mitch. That's getting ready to tear the streets up. And that's it's gonna be, be a series. And it's gonna be real clever put together. That's why I'm, I'm treating it how I'm treating it. And um, yeah, so uh, that's basically it. Before we boogie, yeah, that's basically it, man. For those Niggas who don't, it's bag chases, man. Nah, so so, so well, for those who don't know, tell them the scene that you were in and paint them for so we can they can get. Through. I was in the scene. I was in one scene um, when they was passing the money. She the fuck out. Then I was in the scene where. Um, when Cameron shot the nigga in the ass with the chain and he pat gave me the chain. Yo, you shining now. He gave that to me. So, <clears throat> let me elaborate on that. I'm glad you asked that question. See, I really wasn't even... I wasn't play. even <laughs> gonna... That was a scene that they just put together real quick. I was there doing consultant work. Mm. Helping the actors. Okay. And, like, the crying scene. When uh, Makai was in the car crying. Yeah. He was in the car leaning up crying. Whoever I see, I'm gonna kill him, this, that. I was like, oh, cut, cut. Dame left me and my boy Jay Black there to handle the movie. Oh, wow. He flew to LA, do what y'all need to do. I was there with Charles Stone, was the director. He gave us full control of doing whatever. Cut, I'm like, cut, nah, I don't like that. Uh, nah. So I had to show them how to act like A and act like Rich and shit like that. Even though A got with them, Lou them got with them when they came over here or whatever and showed them certain things. But over there, we was there for three months mm. filming. But um, I had to show homie how to do it. Rich leans like with a style. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't none of that sitting up. and So I had to show him that. He did that scene four or five times crying. And we used to ask him, yo, how the fuck you cry that many times? Makai said, I just think about something sad. So... 
you know, I was just there doing consulting work. So that scene, I just stumbled across doing that. They mm. go to wardrobe real quick, and they threw all that stupid shit on me, the stupid looking hat and all that. And that's how it happened. We didn't know the movie was gonna turn out to be a classic. People see me in airports still to this day. Yo, you that nigga from Pay the Fool. Yo, still to this day. And I'm happy to be a part of that. Part of the legacy with a small part. I ain't even have to say nothing. Right. That's how real shit is. That that scene was the scene they used in the Source Awards and got Cameron a Source Award. And they mm -hmm. used my scene all, like all the above. So, you know, I just feel blessed to be a part of something because that showed me that I'm doing something right and moving in the right direction away from all the negative stuff where we come from. So I'm glad you even asked that question. For real. Give up the Instagrams. <laughs> At I am Big Bootsy. B-O-O-T-S-I-E. Yeah. At Shine Boy Double. S-H-I-N-E B-O-Y D-O-U-B-L-E. Sean Boy Double, Harlem. Yeah. Uh, big facts. I'm he's he's definitely you, from Harlem. I want to yeah, tell you guys, I appreciate you guys fact. coming up here, man. I appreciate you having me. Um, the story, man, is just, I'm happy that we're able to shed light on the truth that flipped the script. Yes. You know, I was sunk, I was sunk in, man. You know, I was I was in, in tune. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just can't wait to go home and handle it, you know. No I doubt. Was, this is dope. You ain't dope. dealing with nobody that can't talk about it. You feel me? That's our hood. Fuck they gonna say. No respect, really. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? All, all facts. We got the bros out here, baby. Oh, oh. Brooklyn, Harlem, <laughs> Queens, down. Calm down. NC. Calm. You know what I mean? Child, relax. We yeah. out here. I'm Child, out here. Ready to go crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a little boy with A Z, man. He used to I'm thirteen with fourteen, fifteen birds in my house, in my living room. My mama didn't even know that. Mm. She still don't know it. She about to know it now. Oh my god! That shit goes down the line, and we <laughs> like was the next generation real. coming up. Az little brother and me. I used to have all that shit in my house. Bring bring me two downstairs. Bring me one more downstairs. My mom don't even know. If she would have found this, she probably have flushed all that shit. Not Sugar been, Hill, man. I would have been in fucking facts deep shit because my fact. mom flushed it. She done flushed a lot of my shit. How she gonna feel now when she, when she see the interview? Man, that she lady, know that, that she know that story. that ain't she know that ain't my world no more. Y'all might yeah. need to interview and, her. And and she knows that <laughs> I'm in a whole nother world. And right, right. She know I was in and out of shit. I got a lot of ass whoopings, my nigga. That's yeah. why I'm still here. Cause a lot of my friends is either dead, high on drugs, or locked up doing life sentences right now as we speak for murders and for drugs and shit. Mm. I'm thank God for my ass whoopings and punishment couldn't come outside. And I still did shit, but yeah. the end of the day, thank God I'm here. So she yeah. already she ain't gonna understand totally. She might laugh. <laughs> it's just for real. We bless y'all coming to the show, man. Appreciate y'all coming up here and, Appreciate and, 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 and you know, telling y'all story and uh, you know, bringing us to Harlem. You know no what I'm saying? This, no this, doubt. This real, 146, so. 145 St. Nicholas. The whole Harlem, though. Whole Harlem, you know? Y'all getting ready to blow yeah. up majorly, so hopefully we'll be back with the uh, other stories about the network that we're doing and other positive stuff. Nah, for sure. And shout my boys out down in, in, in Raleigh and Durham and Charlotte, Raleigh, too. Durham, like, you know what I mean? That's where we be Charlotte. at. Charlotte. Hey, shout out to them, shout out to the whole Carolina. Yeah, that's a yes. Carolina. Yes. You gotta make it. You gotta get that flip. You gotta get that. You gotta shout get to that. North Carolina, got man. to. Hey, I was out there. I was out, I was out in North Carolina. Word. I was in Jacksonville, South. North Carolina. Oh, me, yeah. Man. I was out there. That's the yeah. Army yeah. area. Yeah. The Army you gotta base. come up to Raleigh and, and Charlotte and shit like and salute that. The, mm -hmm. Salute to mm -hmm. North Carolina, yeah, man. Official people out there, man. Oh, that's yeah, a fact. Definitely. We out there. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. A lot of people sleep on North Carolina. They be thinking North Carolina soft. That's why a lot of. New York niggas will come down there and get killed because they think it's sweet. Mm. It's nothing sweet in North Carolina. Them boys bust them guns yeah. and all that. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing that I'm bragging about. Horrifying, I'm just saying I, I want my New York niggas to come down there. Just show niggas love. Don't act, you know, because right. we, we, we are trendsetters up here. So we can't go to them places and act like we better than them. We can't do that. Let's be the same as everybody else. It'll, it'll let you last long. But we like some of the longest lasting New York niggas in North Carolina, they'll tell you that. Because we, they call Durham baby Brooklyn. They don't play down there. Can't be weak. At all. Respect. Bull City. Shout out to them. <laughs> Shout out to them one time. All right. We out of here, man. At DJ G Money 156 on the gram. You know, every Thursday, Tipsy Thursdays, make sure y'all pop out. You know, um, another classic, classic interview. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. It's my guy right here. <laughs> Big facts. Cool, man. Big facts. <laughs>
<laughs> we here, man. Sign us out, man. Come on, before he got, oh, he, he, he so got back from here, probably, man. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, come on, man. No, I, I thought like, y'all said we out. sign out. Let me sign out real quick, man. <laughs> oh, okay. My oh, bad. Boozy, what's up with you, man? Trying to rush out of here, man? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> out of all due respect, my nigga, I'm just make sure you know. I appreciate you, yo. <laughs> no listen. doubt. Everything I right? yeah, yeah, it's dope. It's Queens Flip, man. Um, <clears throat> uh, definitely appreciate Big Boozy's brother. Shine Boy Double. Double, I know your name. <laughs> I can't wait to come in here, man. It's my man. Um, um, you know, this is a classic interview, man. Um, you know, I'm happy that people come up here. You know, we're not glorifying things, and you know, we're not out here trying to um, put anybody in any trouble. That's not what we're trying to do. You know, we don't. We know a lot of us. Well, I'm from. A lot of us have family in the game, and you know, mm -hmm. I just well, you got to just do your research on who niggas is so we're able to talk about it and we know and we and we speak about it we have conversations with our guests and let them know how we feel about subjects so you know i just definitely want to thank big bootsies brother sean boy double thank you no for doubt. pulling up um yeah <laughs> you know also you know we're not responding to anybody who has something to say or haters man you know i'm outside man i'm tangible you know what any of you don't see me outside man just leave me alone, man. I'm out of my business, man. And they come bother me when they don't yeah. see me. Yeah, you want to have conversations, nigga. I be telling Jim, say something. I hope y'all niggas hear this. I tell this man, do not open his DMs. I tell this man, stop. But you know, he gonna do what he want to do, man. They, 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 they come to my events and, and yeah. meet me outside. Bro. Yeah, you gotta meet them outside, man. Because he's, you know, <laughs> to be honest, you know what G Money may think is not what Queen Flip may think. This is where it goes. It gets. It always get difficult for you guys, man. You guys <laughs> just gotta just follow the proper protocol. You know what I mean? G Money actually is a guy that's good. He sit there have a conversation with you, and he and he tells me like your flip, you know what I mean? And and the thing is like a lot of things have to be moved around, but we definitely everybody's story needs to be told. We ain't good, we ain't too good not to tell nobody's story. If yeah. you have a story you want to tell, everybody's story needs to be told. You know what I'm saying? We just want to be able to do the right thing for the platform in, in order to move forward. You know, we don't want to oversaturate and overdo things. You know what I mean? If G money cut to me like your flip, I think is a great idea. I'm gonna listen to my brother. You know what I mean? I may be a little combative at first, but if, you know if it makes sense, it makes sense. Business is first, and that's what a lot of people, you know, we're not one of those Facts. platforms that you're just going to get a shine shine off of because, you know, somebody said that they kidnapped somebody and want to talk about it. Somebody said they did something else and want to talk about it. And certain things just have to make sense to us as a business because we don't want to oversaturate or do things that don't make sense. You know what I mean? And Facts. It's the people the first. So, it's Queen Flip, URLTV.TV. Remember, lock your doors, close your windows. Hey, Flip. Yo. I say one thing before we go. Oh man, you just stop. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, listen, bro, for real. I want to say this, right? Yeah. I want, I want to give a shout out to Big Brother AZ and Big Brother Lou. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. More power sure, because man. that's our brothers. That's right. And I just want y'all, you know, when y'all see this or G this, come together. Let's get this back. Stop right. fucking playing. Right. Yeah. Because we can talk to them like that. That's our bros. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Let's get this back. Let's go for it. <laughs> That's all. Thing. We sticking together. Facts. Sticking together. And we done lost too many niggas from our block. That's real. Let's go. Can't lie nobody so, to so disrespect now, the, my the, brothers. The, 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 the main camera shut off. You oh, know, I was, I was trying to get my outro out, but my man stopped me. Oh, my bad. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's all right. It's no, all right. Man. The main camera shut off. You know, <laughs> let me, you know but um, pardon me. Can you, can you, uh, see what? Right. can you go press the start and stop button behind the camera, please? Behind it, yes. This is be a start and stop button. There we go. We back. So yeah, get out of here, man. Double get shot, shot double. Get out of here. <laughs> Remember, lock your doors, close your windows, close your blinds. And if you see a nigga like Bootsy, like open your blinds. Oh no, 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 no. We we skipping open blinds. Oh, open shit. blinds. Close your blinds. Look through the door. <laughs> if you see a nigga like Bootsy on your lawn, let him in. If you see Sean Boy, don't be afraid to get a firearm. I'm from Queens. <laughs> <laughs>